I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order at 534. And I think that we are nine, if I count right, with Will on the phone. And that means that we're just shy oh, yeah. of a quorum we for the yeah. SE board. Uh, but we don't know if everyone's voting member for. We, I don't actually know. I'm just, but I. Yeah, yeah everyone that's staying around this table is. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm calling, just to be clear, the executive committee to order uh, since we have a quorum of that body. Um, and let's start off with uh, agenda revisions. And I just wanted to um, note that for the, the folks that are here that aren't normally, uh, don't normally participate in the executive committee, that we want to try to front load the agenda so that you know, we can discuss those items and um, set you free, basically, as soon as we can. So that would be uh, 2.1, 2.2, and 2.3 board goals, SU board retreat, and building the agenda for the June supervisor union meeting. Um, is there any public comments and correspondence? Matt, I have a oh, for I'm sorry. Yeah. I think <coughs> the, um, <coughs> the policy, the um, beliefs. Don't the agenda. Could you move that up? Okay. So this is. Uh, 2.7. Okay. So I could be here for that. <coughs> the diversity. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's okay. what I was looking All right. Sure. Thank you very much. Stephen? Um, I'm thinking 2.5 and 4.4. Might make sense to combine them because 4.4 informs 2.5. Okay. So we could either wait on 2.5 or do 4.4 earlier. Sure. All right. Any other revisions to the agenda? Okay. Is there any public comments and correspondence? Any executive committee comments? Mm -hmm. um, we'll come back and approve the minutes later. So we'll go to 2.1, which is discussion of, of board goals. Um, I think at this point, everyone in the room should have a sense of what we're trying to do and have had a chance to discuss with your own district boards. Uh, the goals which appear on page six of this packet. Um, and I had an opportunity to participate in some of those conversations. Uh, but basically, just as a reminder, the, um, my hope is that uh, at next week's carousel meeting that all the district boards and the SU board would, would uh, vote to adopt these as our goals for the coming academic year. Um, noting that, as some people uh, have mentioned, that um, obviously district boards may have other things that they wish to pursue that are specific, um, you know, to their own uh, systems or for their own board work. Um, so that's where we are, and I wanted to. We wanted to invite um, the non-executive committee uh, board chairs to participate in this meeting, so that we could hopefully finalize um, the language in these goals and you know move forward as a group to to bring them to the SU board next week. Um, so with that, I mean. Up for comment and discussion. I can actually get a quorum. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, um, <laughs> we discussed it in our board meeting, and I, for Ruben can chime in. I don't think there was any substantive changes. People seem to be in agreement. Let's move forward to full board. Okay, thanks. I think from the same uh, response, just to move forward and, and deal with these goals uh, and any others that, that may come up. Um, can, I, can I get some clarification? Um, sure. With the, for goal number one, which says, the WHO executive committee with all board chairs as appropriate. And what does the as appropriate language mean in terms of? That's a good I mean, question. Just, uh, yeah. it, it should be an open invitation for all board chairs. Um, it just like, as they appear, as they want to appear, as they desire to appear, just because it's uh, I'm open on that. I, I wasn't, uh, I the word appropriate kind of begs the question of what's appropriate and what's not. I, right. I, mean, well, I, didn't, mean to, I didn't mean to beg that question, but. Yeah. Um, My recollection of our discussion was 
more along the lines of what you're seeing, Chris, is that it would be appropriate to extend an invitation and they could come accept the invitation or not accept it. Right. With all board chairs invited? Well, yeah, or maybe just open invitation to all board chairs. Does it have to be just board chairs? I think that the thinking there was that the intent of the goal is essentially to assess the way that our boards operate and possible uh, and to investigate uh, different ways that boards can operate. Um, and I think that the board chairs seem particularly relevant to that discussion. I don't think we want to necessarily close off. I mean, if people well, I was really just thinking, you know, someone like Chani yeah. has a lot of knowledge about board governance and might be interested. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, or there might be somebody else too. I'd be hesitant to open it wide up because it's a working committee. If you get 12, 13, 14 people participating, I'm concerned about how effective a group that large could be. What about a you know a board one board member from each board or something? Instead of the board chair. Well, you know, it could be the board chair, but it doesn't have to be the board chair. I wonder if maybe we just ought to put executive committee here and if the SU board wants to, and the boards want to charge the executive committee with leading this, and then the executive committee can figure out along the way, do we want to have a larger meeting where we invite everybody to come and talk? Do we want to invite the board chairs to this? Um, but basically, it's a good board. idea. Yeah. We have a better sense of what we're actually talking about. It makes sense. Yeah. Steer a little bit. Yeah. But we'll make that clear, I guess, in the discussion that. See this as being some closed room conversation that's happening. So my expertise is when it's appropriate. <laughs> share with everyone when it's appropriate. So the um, U32 board was generally supportive of these. Uh, Scott Thompson sent some comments earlier this afternoon, which I'll get to in just a moment. But um, with regards to goal number two, the um, School Quality Committee has met a couple times, and we're generally prepared to, to help lead this on this goal. We thought that our role would be to sort of design some of the process for reviewing the learning outcomes and then maybe working on the findings, summarizing things, helping with communications, just doing the work in between meetings. Uh, that seemed to make sense to us. A couple concerns we had was a, around um, Timing. It just seems like a tight timeline, getting the report in October and then turning around and, and developing a goal plan and so on. Um, but it is what it is. The, and then the one question that came up was the last bullet about the implementation plan. We, we just weren't clear on what that, what that means. It, the implementation plan is the five-year strategic plan, right? Mm -hmm. And it is is the expectation that that will change from year to year, or is this more referring to the continuous improvement plans? I, for me, when I see that, it's looking at the alignment between kind of the, the there's three levels. There's the student learning outcomes and mission which was set back in 2016. There's the implementation plan, which 2017, 16-17 was put together. Got it. And then, so every two years or so, continuous improvement plans are done to say, kind of a further refinement. So if you just kind of think of macro, somewhere between macro and micro, and more of a micro two-year mm -hmm. piece. So how does that align? And, um, you know, I think it's good for the monitoring group to look at the is the implementation plan getting us towards the goals in which the board has set out for the supervisory union? Not just the goals, but the student learning outcomes, I should say. Sorry, I said that wrong. Should the student learning outcomes and mission that was adopted. Okay. okay. And I think those have been the conversations in the school quality, I think. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, for Do you want to add, we talked about changing the timing with Brian and everybody we were concerned about the timing if we moved it up to November 
for but that be conversation for later. Well, that's why uh, you had to remind me of the specific. Yeah. So we what we were saying is that all the boards start set. We start budgeting and stuff in November now, right? We right. have all followed the authorities' example. So we we were all. I think we had consensus that we were all thinking that if we moved the what is listed now as January <coughs> to November, mm -hmm. we understood that we wouldn't have the data from from that October. But we, what we were saying is that we would use what we had from from June of the previous year, right? And and uh, and then. Uh, have the October yeah. data, and that would move us along so that that the individual boards don't start setting goals, you know, without the knowledge. That, like so that we're all both working at the same time. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because otherwise, we might be doing things differently, and then in November we want to align with with the full. Yeah, the challenge is we don't get the October report until it's early October, I believe, and then we have time for some discussion at that meeting, follow up with, I don't, I don't remember exactly, but we basically have October and November to really <coughs> dig into it and then summarize all that and turn around and, and create a goal. It's, it's an aggressive timeline. Yeah, and then but the, we were that's how struggling we would, with that. That's how we would, would design the process, just to move it along as quickly as possible. Yeah, the, I mean, the language here is by January 2019, which yeah. kind of implies that many steps can be taken before then, but um, I don't know what your thinking is on, right. what you just said sounds fine to me. Yeah, all right. I, I think it is what it is. We'll, we'll do the best we can. Okay. I, I, I'd be willing to really be comfortable deferring to the school quality committee on revising a timeline. If if that's, I mean, my intent of letting the school quality committee head this goal is they're they're the experts, they're the most knowledgeable we've got. Um, so if there's a recommendation to alter the timeline, I would be very comfortable supporting that based on their experience. Mm -hmm. The ones who really know. Uh, I'd just be hesitant for us to have set up an arbitrary timeline that work for us that doesn't work. Yeah. We don't have an alternative really in mind right now. Right? Right. I, mean, I think the challenge is if, if we want to translate something into next year's budgets. The, January is too late. January is too late. Yeah. 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 But it's not, it's not necessarily budget driven. It's, it, well, be, I want to I want to think about this more. I don't think you need to put it in this statement, right. but I think it's something, Kari, that we should have the discussion before the end of this school year, because it may mean moving up data reports. Because to have it basically instead of we already have an 18 month lag into when budget affects changes for kids, so to do it almost. You know, a 30 month lag, that's too much. It's adding another year, that's too much in my mind. That's, that's right. too much of lag so in the system. If it's possible to we'll get the report in September. Yeah, and, and I, I would also push, push maybe the wrong word, maybe encourage the boards to think about developing that goal as they're working on the budget. Because budgets, um, I think we've spent a lot of time on budgets that I wonder if there's a way we could do it and still have people say have the same comfort level with knowing the budget and be able to develop the goal at the same time. I'm wondering if there's a way we can do that. I don't have a patented solution right this second, but um, I just we, we spend a lot of time on budget from November to December to January, and if we say we're waiting, we're almost putting another year off to impact kids, right? And so I want to say, is there a way we can kind of do both with pushing both timetables? But we're not going to solve that here tonight, right? Well, they're both really. I mean, they're integral pieces. I mean, the budget would be impacted by your student or your your driving. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Yeah. 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 I mean, so I don't want to be thinking about it. I don't that time. So is there a way to just budget? So we don't prescribe yeah. how our executives might handle the budget. The only thing that we do is move the slider from the oh, I get it. right. So I, I don't. 
I don't feel the need. Uh, I think what you're saying is possible. Right. I, I think that unless something comes out in that data set that blows our mind and reveals that we're spending entirely too much or entirely not enough, then the budgetary, the board's budgetary work is not particularly effective. It's going to affect our administrators a lot yeah. you know, based on what we set for goals, how they allocate the money inside of the budget, but we don't. We don't do that. And I would agree with that, especially with the work we saw last week. Chris and, and you and I saw it, Chris Winters. It's it's how we allocate it. Mm -hmm. It's not really what the bottom line is. I think I wasn't talking about micromanaging that at all. That's not what more I was where we're at ten thousand foot you know, I set of eyeballs on this and our goals and that budget do align. I mean they, they impact each other. So we have to be thinking about that and what we do. That's why that discussion to me to personally that's I mean maybe that's what we're going to talk talking about anyway, but I mean I would be I think just as a, as a meta comment um, on the sort of timelines that are laid out here, um, the objective in doing that was kind of twofold. One was to kind of just provide the outline of a shape of, you know, maybe what we might be trying to do. And, um, and then also, again, the outline of an overall calendar for the year, since if we try to do everything in the same month, obviously we're going to stumble yeah. in, in doing that. But the intent was never to like have the boards vote on this and then just be locked into those dates and sure. Darn it, we're gonna September two thousand eighteen, where's our you know, I mean it's gonna we're gonna have to revisit it periodically and I assume just about it at every meeting at least touch on it. Um, and certainly the folks who are leading these these efforts are, are gonna be weighing in heavily obviously on that. So I just wanted to make that comment that, you know, don't look at these dates and sort of feel like you know, we um, we're locked into those, I guess, and maybe we're saying that at the SU board too when we are discussing it. Fair enough. Yeah. <clears throat> Just share Scott's comments. Yeah, sure. So he was generally fine with goal one. Um, he didn't raise these, by the way, when we had the board discussion, but he, he did the email with it anyway. With goal two, he's concerned that the focus is too much on quantitative. So he, he proposes dropping the data-based uh, phrase. He, he'd, he'd like to see, more, I think, more balance with sort of qualitative and a focus on climate, maybe? I'm not, I'm not exactly sure, I think, um, but he feels like the, the numbers don't tell the full story. <clears throat> so yeah, I'd love to weigh in on that one, since I was also party to Scott's comment on this. Um, so he actually suggested two changes to the wording of this goal. One was to strike database and then the other one was to, to say student life and learning as opposed to just student learning because I think his comment was just along the lines that you know stu students don't learn in a vacuum and everything that's happening with them is important and qualitative data and understanding where people are at is as important as the quantitative measurements that we're making and so on um, so that, that's where if I'm yeah stating it correctly where Scott's coming from. Um, I sort of take the point, obviously, um, and I I actually kind of like the idea of making it student life and learning, and I certainly do think qualitative, you know, uh, data is as important as quantitative, and thinking creatively about data is important. Um, I don't like losing the, 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 the term data-based, because I feel like we really the opposite of data based, I think, is sort of gut feeling based. Well, well, is it qualitative is data? data. Right, right. That's, 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 data is data. It sounds like Scott's right. restricted it to right. all Chris, people, Chris, right. Chris knows where I'm going to go, which yeah. is I'm writing I'm in my second or third of three classes in a row of qualitative methods, uh -huh. and it is data based. There are, right, there, are, there are protocols to use, and when you don't use those protocols, you actually make the data you gather valid. And subjective, so it's really important to use the word database. It may be that parentheses and you say qualitative and quantitative piece sure. on that. Um, I have a problem with the life because mm -hmm. it, our mission as educators, we're not funded to take care of all the life problems of all the children 
in the five towns. While we do, and we do a lot of that, more and more has been put on the educational forum without the funding. So this really just really amps up the responsibility of schools that I would say we're not funded or staffed to do. Well, and expected to do. Well, in, that, in part, anyway. I would actually argue no, not from a state or federal piece. I would say you might in people here, but no. We, we, there are time, did we do that work? Yes, because we know it's important to support it. But if we have to take on all the social services agencies, because that's what that means to me, then we've got a lot more, I'm going to talk to you about a lot bigger system than we need than we currently have. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I see a real r turning of the mission. It, and that's not what your mission says, that you voted in 2016 for us. That, that has all this behind me. So um, that's okay, the board can do that, but it's not what I heard from you. I think, the, uh, I think a lot hinges on sort of how, you, how these words feel to you, you know, and sort of what, what their real definitions are. Um, like when I think of qualitative, yeah, yeah, I guess so. In a way, I mean, no, it's, it's worth being rigorous. So I would actually about, say worth no, being rigorous yeah, about. I'm going to be yeah. technical about this education. It's not a qualitative. It's just a gut. Just, yeah, yeah. It's just a gut. A qualitative has methodologies that you use to gather data. Yeah. Well, I guess when I when I heard the term, I, I thought about <clears throat> some of the aspects of our student learning outcomes that deal with, for example, and I'm looking at them on the wall. Um, you know, behaviors, transferable behaviors, um, self-awareness and self-direction. Um, you know, we talk quite a bit about um, how the issues that students bring to class impact their, you so, know, these kinds of so things. So if you so, want to say anything about transferable skills, I'll be with you 110%. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you, I can, and, I, and I, I haven't asked the leadership team this, but I would bet quite a bit of money on it. They'd be in the same place. Transferable skills, fine. But if you're going to put all the life responsibilities right. of children on us, I need to go get a, a lot more resources to take that on. No, I mean it makes so, so, so stu stu mean? student learning as we've defined it already in our. But doesn't like qualities impact student learning? And is I'm not saying I'm not saying it doesn't, Chris. It's right. it's that if I have to take over the responsibilities of Washington County Mental Health. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do I take over the responsibilities of the Department of Children's right. Families? Because that's what you just said there. No, not necessarily. Just that, that, being that, aware of it. But that's well, your interpretation. You the extreme, though. Yeah, and, and, someone could, and someone could do that. So if you want to bring, and, and I think what Scott, and I don't know because I haven't had the conversation with him, this is the problem with email. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't have the conversation. You only get about, remember, 8 to 10% of the communication. I think the intent is that there's other things besides core academics. I'm all willing to go right there with you. I'm just not willing to go there with you when I've got to take up, when you've got to build a system that's going to take care of all the so, mental, physical health, <coughs> and responsibilities that come with that that are out there when you talk about life. So what's in that? What's the nut of that is that you want to, you have to really define that scope and you limit that to that. That's discipline. And then you have to have measurables that are the data. I agree with you. I mean, that can go subjective really fast. So having a what can you objectively measure? Well, I, I think that, I think if we're talking about student learning, then it's on the wall. Like we've already defined it. Right. This is right. what we mean by student learning. Could so. But then, as it, if you start walking into that, I, I mean, I, I after many conversations with Scott too. You know, we talk about this whole nexus of school and human services and. There isn't, you know, the schools are, are bearing an increasingly an inordinate load without the resources to back that, you know, and so you, know, you have to be careful not to go too and, far and, with, this and, with, and without the authority. And without the authority, you're right. Because the authority is in the agency of human services, not the agency of education. Well, then and we're seeing that problem right now as yeah. one program, pre-K, is is governed by two separate agencies. Well, then it turns into a coordination nightmare and everything else, too, so you're... But I get that. I mean, I, I know where your concern is on that. that I so can I, I'd, like, my right. I'd like to hold off on this discussion. This isn't set in stone. This will be what's presented at the full board. Scott or anyone else will have an opportunity to, to say, I'd like to see these changes. And everyone that wants to 
make a recommendation will be heard and will make their pitch and whatever alterations that are going to be made are going to be made by the full board. I don't think we're making them. Oh, I agree with that concern. So, but I, th I think that what we're we're preparing for that conversation as best we can <coughs> so that it's yeah. expeditious and profitable for everyone concerned, right? Yeah. So I think uh, all I would suggest is that um, you know it's worth taking some time to <coughs> to summarize maybe what we've just discussed. So that when we say database and student learning, like some of the nuance of that is understood. Um, that's all. That's all I would suggest. But I agree with you. People are going to bring what they're going to bring. You know, maybe you know. I hate to say this. It might sound dumb, but it might be just a game of a little bit of semantics here. Instead of using database, which is maybe there may be another synonym for that. We can. You know, we want to, What we want is to have a very objective process, a measurable process, right? And that's essentially what the data, I and mean, data can mislead you too if it depends on what data you're gathering. So and to me, it's the idea that we've got a kind of a definable and consistent measurement system. But you want to ensure that certain things are in there. And that's database right. that covers a category. You could take information based and that would be blow the doors open and put <laughs> everything is information. Well, I'm just, so you want, to, you want to at least have certain categories that are defined. I agree with you. Yeah. I mean, I want to, it needs to be, you know, you clearly have to define what you're measuring and then what your goals are, right? And that, that, that's what data, you're going to try to progress towards some objective. Yeah, really. I think Matt, you actually, or maybe you said it, I think if you, if you want a wordsmith, if you put in the words quantitative and qualitative after the word data, then yeah, you're not that's that's super. And I think part of it, when we look at most of the data you give us, is really literacy and math, mm -hmm. science. And I maybe Scott's thinking, you know, you think of the drama and you think of the arts and you think of the music. We don't see a lot of data in that area. And that is clearly up there. But we don't take it, you know, kids don't take a test and we don't get reams of data that are then sent out to us to evaluate. And it, you know, I, I agree with you about life, but I do think there's more to school than those standardized test scores that we're getting. Mm -hmm. And well, we're I, not yeah. seeing and, a lot and, of that yet. But I think that, you know, what we're, what was on, one thing that's on our agenda tonight, for example, is this, you know, um, teacher survey of the progress of the implementation plan, you know, which is not, not a standardized test by any means. It's a, it's a survey of, you know, how people are, um, perceiving and viewing and executing and measuring what they're doing with regard to the implementation plan. I, I think that would fit, I, mean, I don't want to speak for Scott or try to, but um, I think that would kind of fit his broader sense of, you know, the more qualitative and understanding systemically and organically what's happening in the schools as opposed to just looking at digits and, you know. Yeah. And this is what I think, With qualitative research, there's many different methodologies that can be used. There will be times with, with qualitative research, you will get down to the numbers because mm -hmm. you're going to look for themes, and you start to in there. And I, I'm just doing one this next week for a project I have to. I'm going to reduce a whole bunch of like 20 pages of narrative interviews down to a theme analysis that's going to then get into, there's going to be some weights behind it because of the number of times that the themes are, that people come back to the themes. It's, it's part of the, it, to me it's really important, the thing I've gained a lot of importance through this year was with qualitative. If you want qualitative to meet the, meet the rigor and validity, you need to stay with the protocols. So it can't just be an ad hoc questioning. And I agree. Mm -hmm. Anything that you do as a supervisor in the union fits somewhere in here. Right? So we've already got <coughs> the goals, at least, if we don't have the metrics. And I mean, I would argue that I think we <coughs> probably have most of the metrics. The metrics well. are, will be, you'll see your first report on next fall, because we've got the report card going pre-K through 10 right yeah. now, this year, on all of this. So, so we have data. So I want to um, go ahead and move on because we're burning up some time. 
Um, his other comment was scrapping goal three altogether. <clears throat> and I guess he, from what he said, it, he just doesn't see the value in spending more time on learning and focusing our efforts around engagement. He thinks that's sort of what we do. And if we just choose the right topics to talk about with the community, they'll come. They'll come. Right. I don't, I don't agree with that, but that's, that's his point of view. Well, I, mean, I would say he had an opportunity to express that in the voting, and he's in the minority. Yeah. He so also didn't say We hear what he has to meeting. say. I know. <laughs> we had a whole discussion about these calls. And yeah. Anyway, he can, he, can, yeah. he can voice it next week. Yeah, I mean, I think that the, you know, what he said kind of really illustrated for me what we already discussed, which is that we don't really have a working definition of community engagement mm -hmm. at the board level, which is why we have this in here in the first place. Um, so I would think that's kind of where the conversation would go. So is there anything else about, so I've, I've got a couple of, uh, really one change to goal one and a couple of things to mind uh, when the topic comes up at the SU board. Um, is there anything else, any other comments or any other suggestions? Or, no. Okay. Well, I really appreciate everybody's attention to these. Um, and I know I've been, you know, trying to, to drive it a little bit. Um, but, uh, but I really appreciate the way everyone is sort of, um, you know, stepped up to engage. On, on. So for the retreat, uh, the, we did the poll. Um, we got responses from 80% of board members, I think. Um, and 80% of those said the day was works for them. Mm -hmm. um, and then I had another handful of pretty solid maybes, just depending on certain scheduling issues and such. So the day itself seems workable enough. Um, we get a large group of people, I think, for it. So what's the final date? August 2nd. August. And there really was only one choice. So yeah. <laughs> it was either whether it worked or not to do it then. Um, <coughs> so... What I'd like to do is suggest or bring bring to this the SU board that we would um, pursue that date, um, and I'd ask the SU board to if they'd be willing to um, designate two or three volunteers, basically to work on uh, programming an agenda, and um, securing to the extent that it's necessary um, speakers or, or trainers mm -hmm. for the day. Um, so that's my that would be my suggestion. Um, there are, uh, as per our last discussion, there are, uh, there's one person that I reached out to, one of the people that did the community engagement training for, for VSBA that three of our board members attended in April and spoke highly of. Um, I haven't, she's responded, but I haven't had a chance to touch base with her about whether she's actually available or any other details. Um, and then there is, uh, so that's, and that's relating to goal three and then for goal two, there was this gentleman who spoke at the board chair training uh, last week that did a study for the state of Vermont a couple of years ago. Um, and I found his presentation very compelling. It speaks directly to several aspects of, of goal two. So the thinking was that we might try to see if he might be available as well. Lives close enough by, I think. To Massachusetts, yeah. Um, but that's as far as we, you know. And the other part, if that guy doesn't work out, who's the superintendent who talked to us? Brent? He's moved on. Moved. Brent lives in Canada now. He's moved back to Canada. <laughs> no. So I really just wanted to get a sense of the group about whether uh, what I just said is sensible. <laughs> Are there other thoughts or suggestions about it? Yeah. 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 Absolutely move forward and we need a small group to steer it because there's no other choice, I don't think. Yeah, and just for transparency, I, I would volunteer. Flora, Flora has already expressed interest. Um, you got my, I responded to your email. And yeah, I did. <clears throat> and then I guess we, you know, but it's at the SU board's discretion. Where, where's the location? Have we decided that? Mm -hmm. That is a good question. I haven't uh, got that far yet. Mm -hmm. no. The event thing, unless it would be disruptive to have it outside with it covering. Mm -hmm. It might be a little hard for those two topics. Yeah, we're yeah. going to need some yeah, yeah, working we're space. We're just going to take working space. And okay. take but I think space. the, uh, you know, I, 
have been a part of and even <clears throat> plan some retreats. So the the idea would be certainly not to be like holed up in with a whiteboard, you know, working yeah. the whole time. We might be able to get somewhere a little off campus. Off the campus. Yeah, maybe so. I can think of maybe a couple so, places yeah. that yeah. could allow us to do both. So we have to see their availability. See there. All right. See you. Enjoy. See. You. No. See you. Uh, okay, building an agenda for the SU board meeting. Uh, we have a draft agenda. Uh, we have 90 minutes allotted for the SU board meeting next week, Wednesday. And that was just kind of like we put something down. Yeah, the, sure. Uh, no, I, I think draft. I think all things being equal, we'd like to keep it to 90 minutes whenever we can. Um, so this is on page 8 of the packet, if anyone uh, is looking at it. Obviously, the two topics we've already discussed, goals and review, are on here. Goals can easily take, I think, 45 minutes um, of discussion. There's no question about that. Uh, the retreat hopefully would be somewhat quicker. Um, Readopting norms, this is something that had come up uh, at the last SU board meeting. Uh, there is a set of norms that was adopted last year. Um, I don't know if it's in this packet. It's I don't usually on the back of the agenda, so it's not in this packet. Okay. Okay. They aren't, and I want to explain. Keep going. No, no, no I just want to explain yeah, what's on sure. the next page as well. Uh, so it's basically just reviewing those, and I think formally stating that we would like to, to uh, you know, abide by those norms. Still, um, there's the policy committee chart, which we're going to discuss a bit later. Uh, which uh, question that Stephen brought to the executive committee. Um, and then the rest of the thing is sort of procedural, and I wouldn't anticipate a ton of time or discussion needed. But yeah, as many of you remember, June is a month where we do a lot of work to get done for the next year. The boards need to authorize different things, whether it's the blank authorization for checks in case you miss a meeting isn't held. <coughs> You'll see most of these on the next page. Um, we're not doing anything with lunch prices. We usually do, but we're not. Gonna, we're recommending no change. Um, then there's the. Uh, uh, loans and the investment awards and then all the fuel oils wood pellets things like that uh, reserving monies for technology which will definitely need to be done in the individuals boards if you remember every year um, we keep a baseline we keep the same rate and then we capitalize it so most years some year, some years we take out more but we have you reserve so much for technology if there's a reserve and and Lori and I were reviewing it earlier today and every board is putting money away this year. Next year is actually a big Chromebook replenishation because we're almost at five. We work four years and they're ready to, they're at the end of their life. Um, and then uh, the authority for the superintendent to sign for the organizations. Lori and I are still researching this a little bit. We think it can just be done at the SU, but when we talked, we had a meeting at four this afternoon. So. We needed to check and see if all the individual boards need to do that. We knew my, the auditor had said that when he was here in February that you should authorize the superintendent to sign for the boards. Um, when I sign, just gives me the sign authority of documents. So um, we're going to check that. That may appear in everyone's. But what we we did last June was we did, and Stephen, maybe you remember, recall as well from last year, but we tried to discuss these in the full board and try to do it at the end. But so everyone knows, and then you just go right away to voting when you're in your local boards. <clears throat> so Lori and I don't have to do the <laughs> Which we're more all the we're more all to go have the same conversation six times, but <laughs> it's usually <laughs> easier to do it faster. So that's why I want to show you that chart there on page nine. Um, so I think that the sorry, is that that's it? Okay. There, yeah. I think the agenda is drafted. It seems like theoretically possible we could do that in 90 minutes. Um, but there are three things that are not on this agenda, any one of which would threaten that, that time constraint for sure. So one thing I wanted to ask, Bill, is um, I assume because it's not on here that you did not want or had not planned to, to discuss the implementation plan. Um, survey I or? wasn't planning to do that. That was something that the executive committee had asked for as a report. And we were Carl, you probably remember this when we were doing my evaluation. Right. We said we'll use an implementation plan because that's a lot of the goals. So and we we did get feedback from teachers. Teachers about how we're moving that down. And I able to give you some of the questions. Some I couldn't give you all the questions of the survey because it would have just been pages and pages of comments. Mm -hmm. So I gave you the analysis that the um, that the leadership team did. 
to try to cover the other okay. questions. It's a FYI. Yeah. yeah. So it was more towards that. I don't think that needs to go. Oh, we lost, we lost Will. Lost Will. I know he had, he his, his, I know he had, his, he had his kids. Yeah. yeah so. um, well, he doesn't have a concert. But. Yeah. Um, so um, the other Chris, yeah, Chris Winters has a, has a concert. Um, so that was really for the executive committee. Sorry, that was a little Great. long, but it gives you a little No problem. Time. No, I just wanted to be sure. And then uh, the second one is this, the diversity. Like, is right, that, is which we're going to talk about in a little bit. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't think we had a definite opinion about whether it be dealt with or discussed this week or next week, but sooner than later. I think it would be nice to put it out there yeah. and say, here it is, if we could, and think about it. And so here's maybe, where U32 is going. It's gone with it so far. Right. So it's informational on them. <clears throat> maybe. And put it in the next. Have people consider, do, yeah. do we want the SU board to take it up at our next meeting or something? Yeah. So just an informational report on what's happening and you know what you've done so right. far, which we're going to get into a little bit. And have that okay. statement in maybe, the packet. Maybe that memo would be okay. okay. But not not to get out for discussion, which I think is wise. Yeah. So I think that's that's yeah. makes a lot of sense. I think so too. Okay. And then the last thing, what and if I, that becomes a report to the board instead of a discussion mm -hmm. agenda. Yeah, that's a good idea, actually. Because typically, that's the information is provided. Does anyone have any questions on this? Here's where I'd, like to, I'd like Adrian to get up and speak for one to two minutes on what's happened. So under reports to the board, yeah. we can put U, U32, yeah. and we can use whatever language you've got yeah. here. Yeah, it's actually a great idea. Cause I don't yeah. know, probably. There's no expectation. Yeah, yeah that's smart. Well, and that will have been a done deal by then. The, well, 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 well it's will, not a done deal, but the flag—the flag, the flag will part will happen. Will happen. Yes, yeah. yeah, but it's way bigger than that. Yeah. Uh, and then the last, the third one is—I can't believe I'm about to utter these words, but uh, Act Forty Six. Um, the the theory, I suppose, is that uh, the uh, draft plan from the agency of education is um, supposed to be finished. By June 1st, I don't think anybody really knows um, if they intend to release it or not. I don't know. If no one knows if it's yeah, last Friday. Friday. <laughs> so I think I am just bringing this up because, um, although I am loath to, to do it, um, you know, is there some rationale for leaving time on the agenda to discuss it? Or well, I think the only thing that comes to mind is how do we how do we want to react to whatever information we get? Yeah. And it might make sense to put on here Act 46 update. And if there is okay. none, there, we move on. But if there is, and we want to do something over the summer, then we at least can talk yeah, about it. Yeah, we've got an option. Otherwise, we wait, right? Yeah. I mean, we, we do have the retreat and part of the thinking. I know that's not the longest, August 2nd, so it's a ways away. But part of the thing was to set aside a larger block of time because we know how that. could we? We know we'll have information by that. Yeah. But, um, so maybe you do I the guess, same thing for this kind of a report to the board, Act 46. Same idea. It's not really a discussion, it's just a check-in. Yeah, and here we either have this information or we don't, and what are we going to do with it? I mean, I think the honest thing is people are going to do what they want to do in a way, I think. So I would, I would say this. I think that people are going to want to talk about 46 if something comes out. I believe by then something will come out. Either we're behind or we release something. Mm -hmm. um, and I think not, I think that if we should be prepared to not shortcut other pieces, but that the exec, the SU board may need to be lengthened from 90 minutes to longer. Um, because I think if it isn't discussed, there will be members that feel like, hey, I didn't get a chance to discuss this with everyone. And that's never worked well right. with us. So I'd rather have us say, we're going to put it at the end. That would be my setup for the agenda. Put it at the end of the discussion, the last oh. item. And then, Matthew, as we're getting closer to that day, kind of see what we know and be willing to, and maybe even put up top, this may be expanded to a two-hour 
SU agenda. How do we warn to care some meeting though? Like, I, don't I don't see that as a big problem. Oh, okay. I think you just we warn the other ones for seven, and we say if the the SU board meeting may go long. We don't have a lot of people that show up for. No, I understand. I for others, that. so I think <laughs> we can properly warn it with a title, and then just if it happens, it happens. Because I th I think trying to shortchange there not being a discussion just won't won't work yeah, for our membership. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of realistic that yeah. we're going to talk about it. I guess my question is, uh, to what end? What, what can we possibly accomplish? I think it might be happens? saying, so how do we... <coughs> what's next? What's next, and do we need yeah, to have time? Because what would go to me is, like, when you ask me that question, Kari, I'd be like, we need some time to digest this and then come together again. Right. And I hate to figure out... I don't want to be the one to say this, but I'd almost be one that you might need another SU board meeting in the month of June. I, well, that's yeah. what I was going to yeah. say. Yeah. If there's something yeah. substantive, yeah. it's yeah. not... There's not going to be, it won't be addressed adequately. Yeah. People will leave that meeting not yeah. satisfied. And we call okay. a special. Yeah. If we have to. Yeah. So well, they, to uh, me, this this is just to me, it's informational with a brief, and the brief discussion might be, this is pretty substantive. We need to come together again to, to have adequate time to deal with this. I would agree. When would that be? Yes, I, I, I agree to that. Yeah, it's a very yeah, nice. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Because yeah. if we don't, that's 45 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and we won't get it. We won't have done anything right there. Right. Right. You'll have to have another meeting. Anyways. Right. <laughs> because nobody's had time to process what's in it. Unless it actually comes out on time. Even so. Even so. Even so. First. Yeah. That'll be a little bit my job then, but I will appreciate any assistance. Can offer. I'm pushing you all. Sure. See if it's like. <laughs> all right. Um, I think that's everything for the uh, SU agenda. Okay. So, so it's still under still under discussion. The uh, Act Forty Six. We'll put it in discussion. I think, as you said, you know, we'll just sort of say like we may need to extend the meeting. There's right, but I, I, I like Steven's tactic better than mine now. Oh, I see. I'm sorry, I missed the yeah. of where to put it. I mean, well, as a report, report, to, the report, the board, report a, to the board? Well, yeah, another report, and it's just, here's what we okay. found out two days ago. <laughs> yep. And if, if it's, we didn't find out anything they're going to tell us in three more weeks, then yeah. do we, the discussion is, do we want to schedule in case something substantive comes out of meeting? Or if there's something in it, is what we've received back concerning enough or interesting enough that we need to call a meeting, an additional meeting, right. to deal with this topic? And people can look at it and say, no, let a small work group do it. Or People can do whatever they want. It's but it's just, the, it's just it, uh, the only purpose would be see what's there and determine what we're going to do next. And we're not what we're going to do next won't be going on in that meeting. If there's something else yeah. to happen, it'll be at a date okay. specified. Great. Yeah. I think that's really that sounds smart. good. Sure. Yeah. Very wise. Dave, can I have you pause on your reporter piece just for a minute? I've used David a few times because he sits in a whole bunch of different. You haven't heard anything different on what's going on. Yeah, I don't think you will. I, <laughs> I sent a couple of emails and yeah. I came back. But I do. I'll give you a call. <laughs> That'd be good enough. Just because I know you, you yeah. said you, I mean, you were just at Barry this past yeah. week, and I'm there in the dark too. Yeah, we all are. Okay, so we had moved up 2.7. Okay, yeah. So uh, real quickly, the memo kind of explains it. But um, we, we don't mean to pile on um, to the full board, but we did think it was timely to, to bring this to you. As we were focused in on the specific issue of what to do about a flag, we also realized that there is this much larger issue that goes to our, our values and our culture and it, it addresses learning and, and a bunch of other things, and so we we decided that we also have to think big about you know what what do we what do we want um, you know, and as we started to dig into that, we it was such a big topic that we just decided to focus on a belief statement and just a series of statements about 
what do we believe about these topics of diversity and inclusion? So we had a really great discussion about it last week. Um, we are more we didn't we didn't um, approve this statement, but we are headed in that direction, and um, we thought that it, you know. For us, a potential next step will be to develop policy. And since we have a policy committee and we're trying to create alignment amongst our policies, um, and, and because this is an issue in every school, um, it, it's come to a head in you know, either two to a certain extent. Anyway, we just decided to bring it to this group and see what you think um, the next step should be. Mm -hmm. And Kari drafted that with some help from Scott. I think they covered was pretty comprehensive and thoughtful, and I think it really reflected our conversations over the past couple months of kind of the idea that there are a group of children in our school students that don't feel safe and comfortable for reasons of racism and diversity, and that we need to figure out a way to make everybody feel comfortable so that they can learn. And, and we can't really direct the administration to address this issue until we are clear amongst ourselves what we believe and, and what we think the policy should be. And I would say that we were pretty much in unanimous agreement about this. We had a lot of conversations, but I think every time we kind of tried to draw a conclusion, we all were shaking our heads, yeah, yeah. Just to, to sum up that you're developing, the Unity 2 Board is developing this policy and you're bringing it forward really to ask whether the SU want, as a whole wants to take it up as a policy. And we aren't calling this a policy. We're just We're not there this. yet. We're laying the foundation. Yeah, yeah. these are kind of our Bond beliefs and, and values. So can I just add, we had the discussion at the board that good policy comes from what your mission, your school <laughs> outcomes are that you want. And so the board talked, I think Kari and Scott took that and then and we're trying to remember back two or three meetings ago, but it was around, let's say, well, I know that at one point some of, someone asked, what do we believe in? And that kind of started getting down to this because your mission should come from your beliefs. If you think of the question that spurned everything that's on the wall here is what do your communities value and want your children to know when they leave? So it's, it's about a belief value piece. I think I'm summing that up. So then we could. Yeah, so I think our next step was the policy. You know, if if we want to develop policy, we're trying to be true to the policy for the whole supervisor union. Right. And so if we're going to develop that policy, the whole supervisor union hopefully would stand behind these values and beliefs before we try to develop policy for them. Seems like this is, I mean, this is clearly a policy issue, and it's clearly one that would be unified. I mean, a, I mean, across our. That's what we think, yeah, yeah. 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 and that's sort of why we brought it here. Can I, sort of going off of what you said, we have a mission statement, which is sort of a 10,000 foot view, but intentionally you know, says things like all students. Um, I wonder if it is valuable to skip a belief statement and just go straight to a diversity policy or a, whatever, I'm probably using the wrong word, but um, maybe this belongs more in policy. I almost see this as, I guess we have a is it called a mission or a mm -hmm. vision? It's a mission. It's a mission. It's a mission. It's a mission. Maybe this is part of a vision, a more specific vision of that mission. It, you know, it almost comes underneath. The, the only piece that I, and it may just be, I may just be reacting to it, but okay. I'm mindful of trying to be inclusive by putting something off to the side. Right, like if, if we're if we're if we're not if we're handling this in a different way, then we handle everything else. It sort of begs the question of why. Because it's an issue. But, but every other issue that we deal with, right? 
So, but the, I, I, I guess what I'm saying is by in a well-intentioned effort to sort of call out our good intentions, we could actually do exactly the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> What's the concern, though? How, how could it backfire? I don't think it would backfire. I think that I think that a policy that falls under the umbrella of how we govern as a board and a supervisory union makes complete sense to mm -hmm. me. Okay. Right? That's that's what we do. A mission statement or a vision or. or value statements sort of off to the side mm. is an outlier to everything else that we do. So in, in trying to address an issue of children who feel like they're outliers, we could unintentionally you mean if we don't have a policy? If we treat it as well, something that doesn't have a policy? Just to... by setting a, a a statement off to the side rather than following our normal uh, process of governing by policy, right? We have policies for, for everything. And I, I'm, I feel like I'm leading the conversation too much, but it's just, it's sort of popped out to me that, that if there's a group who feels like they're not part of the whole, perhaps the best way to, to make them feel like more part of the whole is to have a policy that says we're yeah. we're going to so treat everybody that, as part of the whole. So my, my sense is that the U thirty two board is on the road to developing that, that, is, that policy. Right. That is the goal, yeah. and this and is the, this is the germ of it, or a step. This, this, this is a step. And I don't see this as off to the side. I see this as directly underneath. It's just an expansion of our mission statement. It's okay. just giving it some more detail and some more. You know, I see that too. I mean, it's fundamental to our democracy. This is yeah. something that, you know, it, it really is, to some extent, it is about our mission. I, I know where you're I going. You don't want to create all these special. I mean, we're we're doing a couple of things in this education. We're educating our kids, giving them knowledge, but we're, we're educating them also in the, in the process of democracy and fairness. And we'll break them down. Mm -hmm. That's not really why this is here, but I think that's that reminder of what everything below it is. You know, to me, I, that's my perspective, so I think somehow that idea, that's pretty yeah, fundamental. I mean, fleshing out the, the mission statement with some, I'm, I'm not opposed to it at all. I just, I just, no, I think you're giving me your mission response. Well, well, a practical way of thinking about it is where ultimately would this belief statement live? Would it be yeah. in the policy manual? I don't know. I, I personally actually don't know that this will be here forever. Ultimately, it needs to translate to policy, but when, when we start looking at the policy, it's such a big, sprawling thing that we really felt like, let's have a basis, let's create a basis for this policy, and that's where this came from. So, I think, I think you asked a really good question, Ruben. Um, I'm, I'm recalling a piece that I've read in the past couple of weeks by Joe, and I'm going to forget his last, I'm going to not get his last name correct, but Jerome, it's either Hanley or Hadley. He's a person who writes a lot. He's a professor who does a lot of studying on cultural competence. And cultural competence has evolved over time of what we think is cultural competent and inclusion. To the, you know, in the 90s or the late 2000s, we would have think, thought color blindness, like treat everyone equal, was high, was the definition of cultural competence. That has shifted now. Mm -hmm to where actually advocating for folks that are in the minority, that are Different. at risk, that that's now the culture. And to understand the differences are good and celebrate the differences in the diversity. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I, that's what was going through my head as you were asking that question, you know, how do we, I think the belief statement actually helps us do that work of the diversity, celebrate the diversity and make sure that we're empowering those who feel unsafe, to use the words we've used already, and, and how do we provide that safety. So it's more about the difference between, for me, it's about the equity piece of it, and equity doesn't mean the same for all. It means what you need. It's very inclusive in this place. place. Everyone's included in everybody. So, equity is not equality. Right, so, yeah, I, think we have to, yeah. so I think we have yeah. to have a separate statement yeah. to, to show that it's not 
yeah, it is an equal. It is an equal for folks that are feeling not safe or feeling in, in the minority, and we have to do something different, and that's okay. That, that's just what's going through my head right now. And I do agree. I spent a day today at the equity conference, and a couple of different people from the state talked about how they approach the Black Lives Matter, because I think part of the reason you guys came up with this statement is to try to make sure that, you know, in that policy, not other flags, what are our values so not other flags are flagged. But we all came back around what you were saying, Ruben, that, you know, this is our mission statement, and that should be the driver for equity, and, and this is just the work to get those policy. And I think that it would be nice if we were able, because we're just so close to Montpelier, there's so many people that are doing this work that is struggling to come up with the policy. You know, even Montpelier, after flying the flag, they're still in the middle of of, of that work, right? Because mm -hmm. we're not, so that, it, and also what Bill was saying about celebrating our differences, and I come from a different point. I don't always want to celebrate the differences. I, I want to have that conversation, so more of what they talk about that uh, literacy, so like, like totally bring it in, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, not do separate, kind of separate, like this being mm -hmm. one separate event, mm -hmm. but it, it's uh, that equity, equity literacy framework that they talk a lot about, of course, key editor, you guys might be familiar with that, I'm not super familiar with it, but it's, uh, like it's embedded. <laughs> mm -hmm. So if it's embedded, it's part of our, it's, it's part of our mission statement. There's no question. This cre helps us create the policy. And I felt like it's a little bit about covering, it, you know, thinking about how do we not, how do we set precedence and not, not leave an open ended for other flags to be flown. That's sort of like conversation that went on. And, and, and for me, it's more simple than that. You know, this is that. Uh, it's, it's kind of a civil rights issue. It's not a political issue, so there's not much conversation about flying a different flag to me. But they, they, I'm going on and on. But mm -hmm. you know what I mean. The conversation, it, having those conversations and actually getting deep into it is what it, I didn't know. This is so yeah, that, but that was what was pushing. So this would be like one of like. Goals so that we can create. So I, I, have a, even. I have a couple of questions about um, sort of what, what the specific, um, sort of practically speaking, like what this would look like. And I think, you know, anyone that knows me or has heard me at the U32 board meetings that I've attended, you know, knows that this is an issue that's, you know, very dear to me and, and, and uh, an important one. Um, so, you know, I, there's a there's a part of me that would very much like to. Um, I plan to engage actively in the conversation, whether it becomes a part of the, the sort of SU's business or not. Um, I guess the the question I have is we're basically, we're basically talking almost like about a fourth goal, right? Which, which is not hasn't been on the table yet up to this this point, um, and it really I think would require that, or it could at least. Um, easily require that level of engagement and commitment. Um, and I think it already is for the U32 board in a sense. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. So what, I, what I'm trying to figure out is, um, you know, would you be looking for the policy committee to take this on or for the SU board as a whole? Or does it make sense in a way because U32 is in, the board is in the thick of it to it was for you to bring this and, and sort of get a consensus of the group that yes, we're interested in this topic and we want to engage on it at some point, but we're looking to the U thirty two board to lead it. If that's something that's, you want to do or I mean you know. I can see the U thirty two board drafting a policy for this supervisory union that then went to the whole policy committee. Um, just it's because it's, we are in the thick of it right now and we you know, to put it on other schools when it may be Maybe it should be a goal, but it is, you know, right. it hasn't come up. I definitely see this as kind of above the, the policy committee in a sense, because this goes, this is, again, I'm going to use that mission. I mean, we are under an umbrella, unified umbrella here, and we want to have this cross cultural literacy. I mean, literacy is probably a poor choice of words here, but this, you know, that's what we kind of celebrate. We, you know, we create. I mean, there, there's, there are differences in all these groups. You know, the idea is, how do we make that 
that's got to be socially acceptable, and, and and we all should be learning from it. You know, that well, we are under this umbrella. We're under this unified umbrella that enables that. So how? That's what I call you know our mission. Our mission is 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 part of that umbrella. I don't know how we. This is a very difficult one to navigate. There's no question. I'm not sure the policy committee is the right place to start it. But I would. This kind of starts here, I think, with us. And with this, how it, we first have to figure out how it relates to our big picture. Ruben? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I, so this has come to the new 32 board, right? You guys are, are dealing with this right now. What has um, come to the board? What are you thinking has come to the well, board? Well, this, this issue has come to a head for the U32 board. Because right? we it's, had a request had to act. from a, re a group to fly right. the Black Lives Un Matter. Right. And, and we had to kind of back up. Uh, uh, right. Yeah. Which I, uh, I think is fantastic. I think it's fantastic that a group of students um, feels enfranchised enough that they come to the board and I think it's fantastic that the board is being responsive to that and I think it speaks <coughs> of a board that I already think incredibly highly of that you have sort of a, unpacked it to this degree personally I have great confidence that whatever work you do um, and bring to the rest of us um, will be an incredible jumping off point and probably won't need a lot <laughs> if it needs anything to become policy. So, uh, you know, I, I guess it's, a, it's an overly wordy way of saying thank you um, for, for sort of spearheading this work. Um, and I, I do actually think <coughs> that the policy committee is the right place. It's the right entry point for the SU board. Um, and because the policy committee, their job is to evaluate policies that come before them and say, okay, this one looks like it's pretty good work. You know what, we really need to gain some, some input from the, the greater board, or we're not sure where it fits in here and we'd like to get it. But I completely trust not just the U32 board to sort of do the leadership that you've already done, but I also completely trust the policy committee to do that evaluation. And I think we all know that if something comes before us and it's half-baked or it doesn't come before us and we feel like it should, then, you know, it's... We can try to do that. I'm on that committee, but we, we I think, again, but I think we're going to end up coming back to you. Oh, I have... We, I, we're, we're, we are an arm, essentially, of, of this, right? We policies mm -hmm. support our absolutely what we are you know that umbrella I was talking about and that's yeah. where I mean in all these issues I mean like flying a black lives matter flag I you know, I see the conflict with that there's even a kind of a it shows a kind of that itself is a bias we're supposed to be a safe umbrella for all ideas we espouse what they believe and we enable that but we don't you know we don't have to Necessary. I don't. Uh, taking sides is the wrong word. You know, we're. And I see this as the picture where that, the place where that conversation can happen safely, and you know, we don't necessarily jump in with any one group. Is that? I mean, is that making any sense to anybody? Well, can I? Well, like, can I do what so totally? Like I typically do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're, you're batting the thousand so far, Stephen. So. <laughs> Well, it reflects some of what we're doing at the university. Um, but I would, I would say this has nothing to do with policy. This is a norm. And the norm is we treat people with respect. Mm -hmm. And if, if the norm is you treat people with respect, what's not covered? You talk, and so the learning is how do you treat people with respect? I suppose it that has is. nothing to do with That's anything. You treat people with respect, so what, I respect you. What, what do you do though if you discover uh, that a group of people feels that the system disrespects them? 
how is that covered by the norm? And we have to do it. Like that's that's sort of what the that's where we well, that's where, have to that's, where, that's where a procedure comes in. Yeah, yeah. Procedure below cost. Anyway. Okay. okay, but then to go back to what Ruben. So I just bring my experience, and it's not right. at the public school level, it's at post-secondary. When you create, you have to protect groups, but when you identify and when you identify the group that you're protecting and who's in that group, you then, um, as Ruben suggested, the group can become No, I'll just be quiet because I'll suggest this is a way bigger topic that <laughs> needs a lot. More <laughs> yeah, I, 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 have a pull it back. I have a suggestion. I have a suggestion. So, um, I, I believe that this is an SU wide conversation. I, I would even hazard to say that I know that I know that it is. Yeah. Um, that being said, I, I don't think it necessarily is um, beneficial always for conversations to be SU wide. Um, I think in this case, it seems to me like we stand to reach the best possible outcome if the U32 board is willing to to lead in terms of, de un of developing what does a policy look like in this. I think we are. And then, that, so what I would say is it's already on the agenda for the SU board meeting as a report out to that board. Uh, you know, this is what's happening. This is what we're doing. And I think the, the question, if you want to ask one, is, or, or it is, perhaps it's a statement, we, we want this to be a topic of conversation uh, in the SU, and we intend to bring something you know, to spur that conversation yeah. um, at some point when we have our own sort of thoughts collected and, and defined. Um, and he, hearing no objection, that's how we're planning to proceed, something along those lines. I, I agree with you. I, 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 I do think that we need a policy as, a, as, as an end, but I think that uh, none of us or even the U32 board is prepared to create that policy until we are able to do the work. And there's that, you know, sort of implicit bias, privilege, all these things that we as a group are striving to work for getting to equity. So before we're able to reach, so this the statement that was developed is, is great because it gets us started, but then there's work that I feel if the U32 board was going to take it, that they would need to take on a, like a, you know, a bias training you know, mm -hmm. and, and work with, with others so that it's meaningful, <coughs> right? Because we can't, like, pre, you know, like we all think that we don't have biases, but we all do. So in order to develop a good policy, we would have to do that work. Mm. That would be my only request. Might also be that individual <clears throat> individual boards want to discuss this too in yeah. a smaller group, mm -hmm. and that might be an effective yeah. way to start. Or and you can invite the people to participate. Right. I think also. Yeah. I, I like this idea a lot, and we'll have to confirm that the U32 board wants to do this. But right. my yeah. sense is, if we were sort of took on uh, the lead on the process yeah. for developing this policy, then we'll try to be as inclusive as. As people want to be included, mm -hmm. you know that that cause our goal would be to, to design a, a process that gets us to something that's that we all support. What I like, you know, what I like about what Stephen was saying too, in there one is that it really, you know, this this probably can manifest itself out of a lot of different ways. That and so I really like having a very broad but clear. You know, yeah. statement that that this. I mean, I don't know if that's in the mission or if you know. I, I think that somehow we have to have something that really covers all of that. That basic right that is there, and uh, I don't know if it seems to me that comes above policy. But we can. Is this something you guys want our policy committee to begin to address? You know, right now, just to help open this up. If you thirty two is working. Yeah. Out. I mean, what, yeah. that, that's something we should probably bring up at the next policy meeting. Maybe if yeah, if you guys want to think about it as well. well let's get through the question of we have a policy. It's on the agenda right, on the agenda right now to talk about it. Well, so we, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. I'm trying not to, hopefully, I'm not talking right now. Um, <laughs> it, it, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to pull things together and tie things together. 
and allow some a way forward on this. Our third goal is community engagement, understanding it and doing it. In my mind, this might be a perfect topic that's not a school board topic at this level. It would be something to engage the community in outside of school board, outside of open meeting law. We're kind of not trying to make things secret, but trying to make things flexible where communities can um, have groups that gather, that are involved, and begin to, I don't know, you know that <coughs> might be a perfect community engagement topic. There's a group at U32 that mm -hmm. might, you know, a group of students that is doing that at the school. That well, I mean, I, yeah. I probably yeah. shouldn't say I don't want to get ahead, but it might be a way to, to make it relevant to start work on it and still fit within the goals that we currently have. I mean, I agree with you. It's possible. I just think that's a very large conversation. Mm -hmm. That's not one we're yeah. going to have tonight or next week. Oh, no, 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 no. no. We grow into that. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, 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 so I only caution that <coughs> this is an extremely important topic. Mm -hmm. It will take a lot more time than any of us at this table will realize. Extremely important, I think. So realize what I'm saying. So it may mean some of your other goals might have to go in the background. Yeah. Not one that as a goal yet. Well, no, I mean, I think what Bill's saying is this could easily overtake everything else. Yeah. 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 So. We can't achieve equity without you can dip into this. All right. You, and that's where, I mean, Floor was trying to say that to you. If you're going to do this, you got you got to jump in into the deep end, and it's our experience already is that it is putting almost everything else aside right now. I don't, I don't, I'm not deeply bent enough. I, I would be glad to talk to you. We'll do it out here, yeah. I mean, I, can we just, I mean, you kind of set some of you, we can apply some discipline to it, because we can't just drop everything, obviously. We have to. I mean, it is, for better or for worse, it's just is the nature of the, of the topic. Issue. Of the just is. And I, I, I feel like I feel like U thirty two is already in the deep end and I guess sort of my trying to approach the question you're bringing is does the entire SU want to be there right now uh, in the deep end with you? Uh, and I don't know the answer to that question. I don't uh, I think that there's some I think that may be the question if you if it comes up at the full board, that may be the question how much time and energy are we willing and to the detriment of what okay. to put to this question? Or are we willing to defer some of this initial work to the U thirty two board? Yeah. I guess I would say I am not settled in my own head on, on this, but I feel like we have a way forward at least for next week's meeting. Um, so I, I guess I'm going to be short short term. just just mindful of the fact that we've kept our special guests now for 80 minutes um, of this thank meeting. Thank you for addressing that. I really appreciate that. No, thank you for bringing it. Thank you for addressing it. Well, we uh, are you're welcome to stay. We'll stay as long as you like. We'll probably be here for a while longer. Uh, but uh, but feel free to go. Yeah, you need to be called. Okay. <laughs> we have to wait for Kari. So. You should back up to one four. Don't forget it. I'm going to wrap that up in the action items with the board orders. That's okay. Yep. Yeah, we can take a two minute break, I guess. Since we, uh, it seems like we are. Yeah. <laughs> this, this board, I've had to know for the past six weeks, so I've, been, I've had to. Uh, oh, I've been going around right. the board meeting. I'm just I'm getting feeling all right. Just get at the end of the antibiotics and bring this up. Yes. So, well, I, I would hope it would be a conversation yeah. that short, of course. The two topics of the retreat that you were talking about getting the I see exactly. Oh, well, this is, it's really just goals two and three. So it's okay. one, one's around community engagement, a, a trainer, and then the other one is uh, basically some aspects of data and student learning. It doesn't always work out that way. 
So, yeah, let's go ahead and hope that we can wrap up sooner rather than later. Um, well, obviously giving everything its due diligence. Um, so 2.4. Don't forget the minutes. I I'm going to move that down. Thank you for reminding me. And I'm going to move that down to the uh, action items with the board orders. So we'll come back to that at the end. Bill? Uh, so on page 18 in my report, you'll see um, a summary from the, really from the leadership team. This really is really taking that, this was taking our minutes from early, late April, early May. But we, we had about a 12 to 14 question uh, survey that went to all staff. Um, and you'll see some of the quantitative pieces that are in there. I just showed you a couple about clear learning targets and can the students identify the learning target. There, there are some other questions that were in there, but I thought, and then I had a bunch of comments from what teachers said. But um, I wanted to make sure that you had uh, really the, the these two page summary, 18 and 19, from what the leadership team concluded from going through all that data. And I thought that was a better way of doing it than giving you all the raw data. Um, Thank you because there was a lot of qualitative data that we had to handle. Yes. Um, I just gave you one question that gave you quite a bit. Um, but the, you know, what we've, what's working well, what, you know, what do we need to do, and focusing our in-service where um, we're getting to the point, and some of this is, it's, it's having to make sure we can get more times during the year we can get everyone together, because when we have everyone together, we can have more of a menu of choice. To say, if you're working on learning targets, or you're working on assessment, or you're working on effective instruction, or universal design, you can choose which pieces. And that helps motivation with teachers to say, hey, I kind of know I need to work in this area. That's the workshop I want to go do. So we're already posed for some of that at the beginning of, of August in service for a day to two days worth of work. Um, we're trying to get as much out of that, and that's really been since we did this data analysis, that's been the main thrust of our leadership team meetings for the past month. Like, so how are we gonna deliver on that? And how do we still have choice? But there's also, uh, within that menu, there might be a couple things, you know, like everyone must do, because we think you all need to, we think we all need to do this. You don't, don't have to do it in the same workshop, but there's different things that you've gotta have. These five workshops might um, fill this one learning target. We're saying we want everyone to make sure they include it in service. So um, that's a brief summary. I, I think it, it really confirmed for us that we're doing really well on learning targets, at least getting them posted, mm -hmm. uh, which is a big step forward from two years ago. I can say I, I can, there's very few classrooms I walk in where I don't see an I can statement if I'm in the elementary school. And then if I'm in U32, I, the learning target today is, and it's a really about not so much like the learning target is I can multiply three by four. It's it's more about, I understand, you know, what am I trying to understand from that? Not just a skill or a fact. So that's what posting means, is that they're in the classroom? They're in the classroom, the and then when I go and ask, I'll, I'll walk in when I go in the classroom and say, so what are you guys trying to learn today? And if a kid can tell me and I see it somewhere, I'm like, okay. And then my next question is, so how do you know if you've learned it? And then once you've learned it, what are you going to do next? Those are, the, those are the, if I walked into every, those are like three of the easy, most powerful, easy questions to kids to know how well a classroom's running. Mm -hmm. Because if they know what they need to learn, how they're going to judge if they've learned it, and what they need to do next, that, that, that's self-directed learning right there, and it's one of the most powerful ways to improve learning. Did anything surprise you? Um, it surprised us how much we need to go back to training we conducted in the past year. And the principals say that. They're like, we're rerunning the same workshop again. Because mm -hmm. it's like, oh, like, yeah, there was a lot of good information in there on how to do it as a teacher. But it, you just didn't. And I understand it happens to me. I sometimes don't get everything the first time I go through it. So that's the really the big thing is some of our menu of opportunities are things we've done in the past few years. People need multiple times. That's fine. They need a different way of learning the same thing. That's fine too. Sure. We all we all have those changing these changes. So, um, I think the thing that we've really um, the other big piece is the support uh, that teachers need with uh, 
using Infinite Campus and really using that tool well to communicate to parents and to students. Okay. How about the comments around uh, multi-tier support? Um, we were we weren't surprised that people don't feel that system isn't working. Um, we would that like the system that system isn't working. That is system isn't working. There's not a high belief in the efficacy of that system yet. Hmm. Uh, it's different at each school um, because some schools have been working on that longer than others. Um, but that that's until you know the, th the other thing when we look at this is thinking about. Um, adult learning development and values get set for adults somewhere in their 20s so the only way to change someone's values is to have them have an experience which challenges their values and it doesn't mean like a, a learning experience it means they need to go do something and say wait a minute this data is not what I would expect it to be whether it's qualitative or quantitative why is that and start to question that themselves um, so we have to help give that experience that the M that MTSSs can work, but um, I wouldn't say uh, we have a lot of work on our fidelity that it's implemented well first and we're not there yet. Mm -hmm. It's getting better, but it's just not there. So I, I was really fascinated by this and had a bunch of questions about it, but I don't want to bleed time. Um, and there's I guess one, one thing I wanted to ask is, is it possible and is it useful? Um, there's about 30 bullets on here. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, are there like three headlines? Because it was hard, I was trying to sort of figure out what are the, some of the really critical takeaways or, um, and I can spot some of, you know, things that I would point to, but I'm just. I think one of the big ones is that, um, <clears throat> I like where Stephen asked me about the MTSS system. The second one is that data can help us change there's still not a belief that data will help improve instruction. Mm -hmm. So we need to still work on that culture. And that's in many bullets here. And that's, that's throughout the system. We just had that discussion. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's, it's about what do you mean by data? And it's not, I think you could all, I, Jen and I were having this discussion in the past two days. I said, we can sit here and, and argue about any individual test by itself, whether it's valid and reliable. But it's not about the individual test, it's about the patterns you see across multiple different pieces of data. It's pattern analysis, it's not individual point in time. It's interesting that the board is trying to change its culture around use of data while we're doing it on the staff level. Well, that's what I want to say. We need to do it in both places at the same time. We can't do one or the other, right. it has to be both. So data can help improve instruction and learning. I, I pulled out math because that was a oh, yeah. stark bullet for me. Yeah. And then at the end, when you said that the teachers, which seemed like a positive thing to me, you know, were pretty um, vocal about wanting more time to collaborate to study yeah. student work and design. Yeah, we're hearing work. that all over. If you can give us more time to come, we're just having a hard time operationalizing that. Uh -huh. Yeah, they want more time together and more time across in grade level groups or at the elementary schools and grade level groups or content area groups. It's easy to do what you do and do every Wednesday. And it happens and the, the growth has been much faster. Mm -hmm. And it's that short, those short, lots of frequencies of, you know, hour, two hours to it is much better than in service, but any way that we can make that happen. And we're gonna change, we're gonna start pulling teachers next year again. Mm -hmm. We stopped for a couple of years pulling people out of the classroom, but mm -hmm. um, it's gonna, it's great to have the teacher saying that to us. We need more time together to help work together. So what can the boards do to support when those things? The, you'll hear when folks are, you know, we're trying to say no one out more than three days during the year total, but there will be some people who say, well, why are you doing that? Shouldn't they be in front of the kids? Well, actually, if we can improve their quality and the impact that they can have as teachers, that little bit less of time will actually be better overall. It's a net positive. Yeah. It's a net positive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just supporting that in principle. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah, because there will be parents and and, and community members that say, "Wait a minute." Um, and I, you'll hear. I would say that something contrary to that is 
I believe that having a highly qualified person with the kids all the time is the best thing we can do. Mm-hmm. But I think three, four days of professional development of year during the year, not, it's not all of them, but say, hey, let's bring all the fourth grade teachers together for a couple times for half days. That's a good thing. Mm-hmm. And they can help each other because they can help. They want to start building curricula together and lesson plans and unit plans and saying, why are we all doing this? And that's what I just think of, I'll just give you an example from over U32. Like the, algebra, the folks who teach algebra over there now, they're looking at, they have common assessments, they look at it, say what worked, what didn't. That, that's all that needs to be done with professionals to say, let's, how do we measure? And then just say, so what'd you do, Steve? Because your, your kids are doing a lot better than my kids in this unit. How'd you make that happen? You know? mm-hmm. Can I come in and see it for a little bit? You know, after we talk about it. Okay. I'm good. You're good? Look at yeah. my <laughs> Missed. Yeah. So I'm good too. I mean, I support doing that. that I, just in my experience, you know, I see that, you know, it's a team building. That t- it just takes effort to do that. I guess if we, you're talking about a path forward, I mean, I think we're not going to display this at the SU board, but it, we could encourage the executive committee members to bring this information back to the local boards. To well, that's what I was thinking about. I, so, I, so, I, so at least it's... The question is, how do we make sure that all, all board members hear this and understand it? And maybe there's even a larger sort of... Oh, something we can refer to that sort of makes all this clear. And uh, so I, I'm not asking you to do this, Bill, but I'm just I'm wondering if a some kind of memo that says here's the three takeaways or things that are, we're prioritizing, you know, around instruction. Here's here's three things we're going to do about it. Um, so that the rationale is there. And then if if the if somebody comes to a board member, <clears throat> you know, and says, well, I don't understand like why the teacher is getting pulled out. You know, the board member would be like, well, here, this is why. You know, this is the reason why this is happening. And, you know, we, so I, I don't know if that's helpful or not, but I, I'm just For me, to that's it. part of this drives the continuous improvement planning right. process. And those continuous improvement plans should reflect these are the strategies that we're using. Mm. That was going to be my suggestion is yeah. somehow roll this into the right. next plan right. or mm-hmm. report on the implementation right. plan. I see. Here's where we are now. Right. Based on this, we're going to go. And that's exactly sections. where it should be because that's. I mean, the principals are saying to him, they said to Jen, they said, thank you, because we had to write a, a, a continuous unit plan, implementation plan for the state, for the agency right now for grants. Mm-hmm. And they were all thanking her. She was like, you just took all of our work and just put it, because it's the same, we're doing the same things. Mm-hmm. So there might be a change in the approach a little bit at the different schools, but pretty much. And that's where you'll see that. And eventually those plans will come to the board, but we want to shape them for our implementation plan, which like 70 to 80 percent of it is in there for the agency but it's also that's not that was to get a regulatory piece mm-hmm. done so okay I, I guess I'm just saying I think there's commitment on the executive committee I'm feeling to uh, trying to be helpful and making sure this message is heard mm-hmm. by the boards um, so any way that we can help in doing that it would help if you could just like put a brief memo with Together. I like that idea, you know, just something that... But it sounds like that's going to come in the form of the CIP when that, as that comes together. Yeah, right? but so. uh, we might be able to do something. Let me, let me talk to my colleagues. And... Uh, okay, so we can address 2.5 and 4.4 together, report from the policy committee, and then Stephen wanted to bring a specific question about the, the charge. Well, okay, I, so maybe, I don't know. I think it's... That's somewhat addressed in the policy committee report on 4.4. Okay. That's why I thought it made sense to bring them together. Kind of, um, so our rep from the policy committee came back, yeah. and there was a sense that the, the reconfigured policy committee had questions on what's supposed to be happening and how things are going to operate and what they're supposed to do. And, and um, 
think you can see it in the policy committee report. There seem to be some. You mean the minutes from the meeting? Yeah, that's, the, that's, okay. The minutes yeah, sure from the meeting was... on some some potential direction forward. Um, I, mean, I can talk to that. I would think, yeah. if you want me to. I mean, essentially, we really addressed, you know, Bill did told us, you know, we've got our, our mandatory policies in place, and that, you know, the kind of what we were thinking the next logical step to do was jump into the next band of 20 or so policies that are recommended, and then, you know, try to address those in some order as far as we can do it, make them consistent across the supervisory and where we can't, if there's, you know, we'll look at templates, we'll look at, you know, if there are differences, we can embrace that, we'll look at that. And beyond that, I mean, we can get, you know, what other policies, you know, our bill has the big book of policies that are essentially out there and not and they're inconsistent across the supervisory. You know, beyond once we get the recommended in place, we'll just start working our way through those, and then simultaneously coming up with a consistent numbering system, so that there is consistency among these throughout the union, which doesn't exist now. Apparently. So we need to make sure that happens. But I mean, is that a directive that you and the larger board would? agree with. I mean, that seemed to be logical to us. <clears throat> so I think our concern was on how flexible do we want to be on differences in policies from board to board. The last two or three years, it's been moving towards totally consistent. I don't know. I, I haven't seen one yet that doesn't warrant that, but I, we're not, you know, we're different schools, and I could see one school may want something that others, others don't care about, or I could even see possibly differences. Say we cross that and we get to it. I don't see us as a completely valid union. Unit. We're not. We're different communities. We're very different. So our, our challenges are different. You know, so I wouldn't, pre I mean, personally, and I know at least two other people are that we're kind of feeling the same way. You know that that we didn't really see that as you know a, a you know fixed end game that we're going to have all the same policies everywhere. We are a sum of schools. We are different schools. You know, let's go do that as far as we can. Let's address those. And if we have any areas of difference, let's we'll pull those so out. I think that's the crux of the discussion. Yeah. yeah. I don't know who makes that decision. That's well, because that's, that's the way we used to do it. So I'll confess, I don't know what the policy committee's charge is. is well, anybody else I think that's part of it. I don't think there ever probably was a good coherent charge. Mm -hmm. So even though there's, we're not totally in agreement on what the charge should be, I think there's complete agreement on there should be a charge. Yeah. Right. I tell you, I was on that when we was first started way back. But and the charge then, it was really, you know, we didn't. We were really exposed because we didn't have all these policies in place that were really mandated. Mm -hmm. So we started doing that. But when, know, when, with, I, now, I don't know, that was back in the early 2000s. So, yeah, so if we haven't revisited the charge in you know, a dozen years or more. Well, like, I don't know what's happened in the interim. I've been off a lot of years. So, let's, so, so just the history of the interim was um, when I first started as a superintendent, so I can only speak for the past six years, um, that there was. Um, we kind of we kind of were in a place of not getting much done for two years, and then after those for my first two years, the third year, what Stephen had said was no, we are we're gonna we're gonna try to get as close as we can, and it's even closer. We are gonna use we're gonna get to the same place. I can only remember with one one policy in the required where that didn't, and it was on the weapons policy. Mm -hmm. And it was all around guns being in a car out in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, but every other one. We went through the entire. Of all, the, all of the required. Now there's only 28 required. We have a lot more than that, as it says here. There's literally a five-inch binder like this, yeah, and we have. I mean, in my opinion, 
we have way too many policies, a lot that should go into practices. But it, what I asked to spur this discussion was, okay, so we've done the required, what does this group want to do? And I came out of that discussion the way I interpreted it was like, well, we'll start, we were kind of going back to a little bit of, we'll look at the policies we want to, but we're not going to say that we're necessarily going to go, we'll, we'll be consistent when we want to be. That wasn't the tenor of the policy committee before. And so I think in asking what the charge is, because there isn't a charge, there hasn't been one, is a good thing to ask the SU board, so what are we trying to do here, and where's our agreement? Well, I mean, I, it's funny, because I mean, my, my take of the meeting was very different. I mean, first of all, because you remember, we need to go at this in an organized way. We said, let's go, yeah. we're going to break out the recommended policies. They're kind of the next group in that hierarchy of importance. Let's address it. You remember we said, Let's look at templates. If, if we can make that consistent, I'm good with that. I could, that, that sends a consistent message across the supervisory and, and it makes it easy for all of us, you know, to enforce. But then, yeah, I mean, I, the whole idea, I think, I think people are open to doing just that, but they're not going to lock in. I, I mean, I can take a, a policy to my board and you may mandate it, but I guarantee you they might not adopt it. I would adopt it if it was something I didn't like. I wouldn't vote for it. You know, it wouldn't be something that I would support. So, you know, we have to address that. I don't think that's going to happen much. I think that's going to be the extremely rare circumstance. But the reality is there, we need to have a little bit of flexibility. That's the way I see it. But I don't see that as being anything that's going to slow us down. I don't, you know. Slow, slow you down in, in, the con in the doing of what? In terms of updating, what he's doing, saying is let's get rid of the garbage in here. There's He's right, there is a huge amount of extraneous stuff in there. But let's prioritize you know, what is important to us. I mean, actually things like we were talking about earlier with the, with the um, you know, essentially they're kind of the discrimination type. That's a big deal to me. That's gonna trump a lot of other, uh, you know, some dog policy or French poodle policy on, I don't know what that, you know, we're, we have a lot of policies that we're gonna have to look with. Look at some I guess the, qu the question I would I would ask is is it the policy committee's job to prioritize those things or is it the SU board's job to oh, you can do the policy it. committees I, I don't prioritize. You tell me I've only been I don't I've been off of this for a while, but I mean I would we were going on what Bill said. We have we know we've got State Board of Education rec you know, we've got our mandatory policies that we have to meet and we've got our Recommended. Let's grab the recommended first. I mean, because there's something that obviously has been they've been identified as a problem area, and that we should be probably or potentially. They've been identified and, as a problem area. No, as a problem area, it was just a, a suggestion for how to tackle this. If we've done the required, let's look at the BSBA recommended, and then the to be considered policy. And that has been the policy. Right. Yeah, I'm why yeah, they're 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 I've, I've heard like I've heard like when this has come up for discussion mm -hmm. on the Berlin School Board, for example, I've heard a suggestion which actually sounded very attractive to me, which is we have no idea what policies unless we go back and do an exhaustive search of, of past <clears throat> board meeting minutes. We don't know actually which policies are actually Valid. in force across all boards, where there's little differences and tweaks of opinion, you know, these kind of things. So one way to address that is just if the policies aren't mandatory, we just rescind them, <laughs> and then we we go ahead and do what you know whatever is necessary. We, maybe to, maybe, to maybe some, we should ask that at a to carousel meeting because I mean maybe that's okay. I can't imagine. I don't know. I haven't seen all the policies. I don't know what drove them. They usually make a policy for a reason. They ran into a problem at some point, right? They don't do just don't appear out of thin air. So you know that's where looking at these. You know, I think it probably is worth time, to, you know, to look. I'm not take, talking about exhaustive searches. It comes down to that board, those particular town boards, I think, were sending those. They, they would need to do that, correct? I mean, Cal, if Calus had a policy that Berlin or East Montpelier didn't have, you know, we're the ones that have to vote on it, you know, but still, I mean, that committee, I, I think that's a job we can do. I mean, I guess I, I, I see what you're saying. I just we may not want to. I mean, I think we should look at what we've got because we may be throwing our baby out with the bathwater. In that, you know, the, like I said, that policy, those policies, those policies were there for a reason. Maybe that's antiquated and gone, but 
we don't know without looking. Just to take a blanket, you know, rescind them in kind of a blanket way, I'm not sure that would be. Wise. I guess what I'd like to do is, um, this is my suggestion, what I would like to do is talk to, to Lindy, who's still the chair. Policy well, there is no chair. There is no chair. There's, there's, mm -hmm. yeah, there hasn't been a chair. Oh, policy. okay. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, it is a kind of an interesting. It, it's frankly because the work to keep the policy committee running is the work of myself and Krista. Okay. Mainly Krista. Yeah, it, it, this is the piece, and it's to do policy work. It takes a lot of time mm -hmm. and a lot of personnel power behind it. And, and we have one board member of the 32 that I know that is passionate about this and is willing to put in the time. But in the, what has happened with all good intentions of wanting to do the work through volunteer boards. So for the work to actually get done, it just didn't. And then that's why we got to the VSBA ones as templates to start from there right. because they were pretty much, and then little tweaks could happen. Mm -hmm. So what I, that made us our biggest step forward when that decision was made. That really sped things up. Although it took some time to get, to get, get people on board to idea. say, okay. Well, I mean, and to do it. Also, yeah, and to do it. And just that alone, just to do that. And well, I think that's a great, I mean, we agree that that's a really good way to start. You remember we say, let's take those templates if we've got them. You know, then and use those and look at them, and, and it may be. I bet in most cases we're all going to be able to say, "Yeah, that makes sense. That works." I have to confess, Ray, I'm, I'm uncomfortable uh, with the policy committee having really sort of choosing its own direction on this. Well, we'll take your direction. We just weren't getting any. Yeah, no, I, 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 I guess what I'm saying. Like, I think that that's the issue. You give, yeah, I mean, give it to us. We were being asked where where do you want to go. Right, right, right. To me, it's a, okay. Let's go in a logical way. Let's try to take the things that are most important first, and let's look at them in an objective way. I mean, obviously, we're. I mean, Bill was talking about the you know the templates that are out there. Let's, you know, I remember I said even in that meeting, let's look at that. The schools are all represented there. Would it make sense Does for make sense or? would it make sense for us to uh, at the SU board meeting to ask that the policy committee uh, meet and discuss and come back with suggestions on a direction that they want to take going forward since the the main work has been completed like it's basically a tell, tell us what you think is next um, and then we put that on the agenda for our August meeting we can do that I mean, I mean we kind of did that at this meeting I thought that was really going to be talked about a little bit mm. here. You know, that was the idea of kind of going in. We know we have 20 or so policies that are recommended. I said, let's address those. Leave the rest off for right now. I, I guess I would like, rather than, yeah, I don't know, the, uh, rather than have it just come in the form of minutes and it be assumed that, like, okay, that's the way it's going to go, I'd, I'd rather have it come formally to the SU board and, have it be a subject of conversation. Do that. That's so, good. Yeah. yeah, just if we have that guidance, we can let's do that. And I realize, you know, I, you, as you said, like, you weren't getting any sort of guidance before. No, yeah. So, you know, I'm not no, sort of like, so expecting that this would have happened or be done or something like that. But I'm just saying, like, I, I guess I, I don't really feel like I um, understand well where the impetus is coming from and sort of what the, you know, what the work for, of the next year is going to be. So, Kind of astounds me when I saw. I feel for you. I saw your binder of policies. That was kind of there back when we started. That was one of the big problems. None of these policies. They couldn't find them. You know the amount of homework it took to go back and find this. I feel like that's a major problem for us. Yeah, we yeah. Can't, I've we never can't been comfortable it. with the whole policy situation. Yeah, it's kind of a black hole to me. Yeah. You know, it's, there's so much there that I don't feel like but these are my policies. So, so, welcome to my world. Yeah. So, well, so I feel like I'm clear, I'm clear. my suggestion would be yeah. to one chunk of work is the recommended. That makes total sense to me. The other would be with an eye towards some big culling of these policies so we get them down to a manageable level. And if we get through required and recommended, we're left with a bunch of other stuff and and. I don't know how much work it is to go through that, but I, it, I don't think we need to be exhaustive either. No, I, think, I agree. We, we need to feel comfortable that, okay, we've done some due diligence here and we're ready to say this is our policy set. Well, I think we had talked about taking, say, five a meeting. 
let's look at, you know, are these even worth time? If they're not, don't we send those back to the towns to kind of be resent? And maybe off the books, we're not going to replace them. We're going to, you know, that's a waste of our time. If there's something that's of importance, then we can look at that with more. You know, I, would, I don't know. I was still, I was still would go for the recommended policies next. I would, I would not get down into those weeds of things because those are things that have been identified as potential problems by the. Uh, so I, I would say, from the history that I've been told, so I yeah. can say it's correct. But there are some policies in there that were a reaction to a one-time issue. Oh, I agree. I bet there were. So we can and, ditch and I can read. All, I can read some of those. I will bet and I read them. I'm sure you're right. And let's get rid of them if they're not an issue now. And it's not. I mean, but I it, comes, it comes back to where what I would think of is the governance and how we govern and what are those overall governance because those a lot can be solved by understanding roles, responsibilities, and authorities. Yeah. No, I get you. I, I I'm very open to that. I well, think. I think. Yeah. I think. It, I forget we something about the difference between policies and practices, yeah. right? And sort of like one is a board policy, like necessary, right. or one is it just something that the you know, the administration that we commissioned to do the work, like you know, is perfectly positioned and capable of, of handling. Um, and I guess I my sense of it, and I don't, I haven't done an exhaustive review, but my sense of it is that you know we've sort of used policy as practice historically, and so now what we have is you know, this binder. Mm -hmm. um, so it may be worth sort of thinking about that question and sort of how we want well, to address it. So this is a topic that I think the executive committee should handle. We should recommend it. Anything has to do with policy. So maybe I'm kind of pessimistic. Um, our, our boards have never been particularly interested in policy. That's why the policies were in such dismal shape. Just Dolan did it. Mm -hmm. I think in this instance, we, the executive committee, making a recommendation that this become whatever this is, this become the charge mm -hmm. to the SU policy committee, I think becomes a very brief conversation all those in favor, aye, and that's what happens. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm kind of in, I'm in agreement with Kari that what we say is move now to the recommended policies and work through them. And I, I my, my understanding of the policy committee is that's a completely understandable charge to the policy committee. They know what that means if other board members mm -hmm. know. Okay. And that also, they review, they start to look at the policies that aren't recommended or required at all, just some of those policies that are clumped there, and also look at them to make recommendations specifically on what policies should be eliminated. Mm -hmm. So then what happens from the policy committee the recommended policy, so the way they come to the SU now, here's the policy that the policy committee recommends. It gets the readings in front of the full board. The full, everyone, all the boards, all at once agree. Yeah, we, so those move on. And in the same instance, that policy committee could bring, here's three policies that we found, I'm going to make it up, from 1945 that dealt with you know, McCarthyism and right. you know what I mean? Yeah. That there's just no need for them. The policy committee recommends that these be um, eliminated. There was a brief discussion in front of the full board. Everyone's there said, yep, yeah, makes sense, let's eliminate would, would they be, now in that case, I'm, 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 I need some instruction here because it strikes me that those ultimately have to go back to the boards to be, they were adopted, many of these were probably adopted by local boards, like you said, they won't exist across the whole supervisory. So it strikes me that if they were sent, they're going to have to be it's probably, you know, we would make that re recommendation and send them back to the boards. Am, am I wrong in that? I'm not a lawyer in this, so I don't know. It would just depend if, if all the 
boards had that if they had a policy around that, and there doesn't need to be a policy around that anymore. Well, we just have to know because the, all those boards voted on those policies individually, mm -hmm. right? So now that to me, to me that well, we vote on them now collectively at the SU. Yeah, I'm just I'm used to where I'm coming that's, from. But see, that's the, the fundamental. Legal. That's the it's fundamental legal issue. difference. Well, I'm I'm good with going. What is the fundamental difference? I'm sorry, <laughs> I apologize. Um, the, it's it's all at the SU. It's all, it's at the local board level. It's not at the, so we wouldn't vote on policies at the SU level anymore. Okay. Would that be the case? I, I don't. So you I have because they still have to be adopted by the local. So board. this is the this is part of the and we could stay here for the night talking yes. about this issue. <laughs> so I've been mean, actually quieted down to try to right I'm let not, us move I'm on. I'm not going to beat it to death. Um, but this is one of the parts of I have no other word but just I'm going to use issue. Okay, yeah. that's the word I was thinking. Um, so issue is that we have some policies that are SU wide and they right. fall under the WCSU policy and that has happened and we've moved more there as we've moved to common policies. There are sometimes for there have been some instances when there we couldn't determine if there was a policy to be replaced by a local board that needed to be rescinded. When, in some of those mandatory. So we did most try to move all that to the SU to get that going faster. Um, the, we, you know, I don't know, because I literally don't know without doing a lot of digging. You know, it, as we get further into policies that aren't mandatory, the mandatory ones were the easiest ones. So as we get past to the recommended to be considered in the individual ones, like, I can look at the date on when it was adopted. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, but you know, it, then we're going to get into those who individual rescinding and not, and well, I think we're just going to. It's not going to be that hard. I honestly, the way I see that going, I mean, I certainly don't on our board. I don't know the other boards, but you know, once we've covered ourselves with our mandatory and recommended, and we've filtered through these other policies, and there, you know, we could. Just send a group of them to the local boards. Just say, resend them. It strikes, I mean, I don't know the legality of this, but I'm guessing that they have to be rescinded there. That's where they were passed originally. They were, well, I, I may be wrong, that's a question for the lawyer, but you know, you know, they don't have to make a big deal out of it. They're not, no one's going to sit there and, you know, keep a bunch of paperwork that's of. I, I guess, that. so just, just to be. I was kind of dodging this a little bit, to be honest with you, but just to be explicit, um, you know, I, I have a different point of view about, um, you know, the sort of issue that, that you brought up earlier about, you know, we're all different schools, um, you know, and we should all be able to have, like, you know, different policies if we want them. Um, you know, I really don't subscribe to that point of view. Um, you know, I think that we're one school system trying to address education for a group of young people um, that we hold collective responsibility for. And that every time that we uh, have schools that pass discrepant policies, it creates points of friction and um, obstacles to the, the sort of um, effective execution of that objective. And that those you know, points of friction accumulate over time and, and really sort of, I guess for lack of a better phrase, gum things up. Um, so so that I think there, and I understand that my point of view is not shared by everyone. Obviously there's a difference of opinion there. Um, and I think that what flows from that is also a difference of opinion about how should we approach policies? Should we approach them all together as an SU? Or should, do we need to go back and have all the local boards take each step that every other board takes to rescind X policy or to approve this policy? Or So I think there's some, it seems to me that there's some fundamental questions, I'd call them meta questions, if you will, about how we approach policies that we're not going to resolve tonight. Um, and that seemed to me like may require some conversation um, within the SU. 
And so I was trying to sort of tee that up by saying, like, let's, let's engage the policy committee and sort of asking some of these questions like, how are we approaching this work? How are we prioritizing what we do? How are we going to do that work? Um, and then bring that back to the SU board um, in August when we have time to discuss it so that we can you know, I'm good for that. that I, mean, I, I do think, you know, we you have a beard, I don't. We, will, we, we have difference and we're working toward the same end. I'm with you. I'd like to see these as consistent as we can. But I think that part of, you know, we can start writing policies right here in this room, you know, if we want to control that here. But the more familiarity our schools have with that, the more, I mean, they still should have to vote on it. That's an easy thing for them to do. I've done enough of it. And we, you know, they take, they read them before their board meetings and they've been vetted by the superintendent's office, by the committee. They're going to adopt them. And we don't, we're not going to have that. That doesn't happen in every no, case. I mean, it really doesn't. back when you were there. But that's not what was happening. It would go to the local boards. Each local board would wordsmith the document. Then it would come back to the policy and the policy committee would try to say, you know, okay, Doty wants the word student, and and we actually have two, you know, learning two cases right now, instruction, and, and and then it would go back. Okay, policy committee came up with this recommendation. It goes back to all the local boards. Two of the local boards say no. I hear you. And, I, and it, I get all it did was. I know, and that did happen and when and I was this is, there. It's literally and you know, two any. policies that are under consideration like, as we sit here and speak. So it's not sort of like a, a thing that hasn't mm -hmm. been a problem in the past and won't be a problem in the future. It is a problem. Um, and so it's one that sort of deserves you know, being, I think, addressed as one. Um, so you know, my suggestion, again, would be that um, we find a way. I, I, I guess I am surprised to hear that the policy committee doesn't have a chair. I probably have heard that before. So I don't know who to address a question or a sort of, a sort of you issue could, to. You could tackle them um, to, to appoint a chair. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, you could for um, sure. yeah but I guess the, re the, the sort of request, again, that I have in mind is simply to put some of these questions to the policy committee and ask them to come back with some thinking or recommendations that we could then discuss you know, at, a, at a future meeting. That's good. I mean, let's and I think you know we have the summer, so it's not like a lot's going to happen anyway. <laughs> July, July, August, August, August. So well, this this first. isn't the end of the world in, any, in either one of these scenarios. I mean, I like I know I see the sense in what you're saying. I also do see I can see places possibly where that makes sense to have that latitude. And I actually do think that it's important. You know, there's a different place here. You're trying to keep these local communities and boards engaged as a whole, so involving them enough in that adoption process, and not just ignoring them. You know, you make them irrelevant. That's what this boils down to. I agree with you that wordsmithing is an issue, and uh, how we would get around that. I mean, we're, we're Lynn and then East Montpelier all rewrite something. Not only does they have time, but you, that lack of consistency, that becomes yeah, and it's also tough. I can't believe I'm still talking about this, and I'm, I'm doing it now. You but, can uh, talk me out of this. But the, uh, I'm, I'm no, it, but it is curious to me that you know the each board has representatives on the SU board. The majority of the, uh, their boards actually serve on the SU board. Um, so it's it's I don't really understand how a conversation at the SU board would be different from the conversation. Well, because the town might not, that rep they could be voted down on an SU board by the by the herd, you know, whereas if, and they can't on their local board, that's where, but, you know, I do, I do remember how painful some of those policies were. They come back and forth five times in rewrites before, and I'm sure that's what you're alluding to. That did happen sometimes, not always, but. Um, so I think, I, I think we're agreed that we're going to punt. Yeah. Let's, Let's go ahead and ask the poll. We're going to charge the policy committee with yes. coming up with questions to bring to the next full board. Correct, right. These are things that need to be discussed, and, and you know we want direction on these areas. What's the full board's? What's the SU's direction they're providing to their committee? Is that, I will, is that I the way you've heard it? Yeah. I mean, I I. And we'd like to know in that conversation, so let's get this, you know, what you expect of us 
I mean, there was even talk of people disbanding that since we had the mandatory projects and just not doing it, you know, but I don't think, I don't think we're there. We don't, we have a lot of work to do before that. I think you, you guys come up with what you want. So you I will take, I'll on. take the responsibility of trying to communicate out to the policy committee. And we won't be able to discuss it on one. Right. Yeah, no, I'm just saying like, with a, and then, uh, just to kind of lay out what we think a path would be, you know, I think what what's helpful for you, you is is knowing ultimately. I mean, what what are we going toward? Just a consolidated policy, you know, policies that are adopted at the SU level, never touched the local level, and then if I mean, I don't know if there's an option. I mean, I don't know how you would do that. It's kind of either one or the other, but. You know, if I, I definitely see there are many policies that have got to be consistent across all of the schools, all six schools. But yes, and those, and not wordsmith, and not, you know. But I can all, you know, I could see the potential for some policy that, you know, was only even really needed at one school. So, you know, and I don't want to eliminate that ability. Now, maybe we have to. I don't know. What I would like to do is tee up a later discussion about the, the, the charge and nature of the policy committee's work. Yeah, that's cool. Good. Um, and I would, what I want to ask for is the policy committee's input on that, on those questions. Um, so just at a very broad level, that's really all I'm, all I'm talking about okay. at this point. So. Let's do it. I'll bring it up to the next meeting, too, if you can. If I will. I'll try to I'll that. summarize that and, and, and send it out. So. Uh, so for 2.6, the special education hiring process, this came up at the last meeting. We asked that it be on the agenda. Um, you know, Chris isn't here. Right, we have a table. Uh, I agree, yes. Yeah. Right. So we'll uh, table that. Um, the annual fiscal management questionnaire. Yeah. Most of you have seen this at your local boards. We need to do one here for the supervisory. We've got it here instead of the SU board. It's page 11. Um, this is the requirement that uh, the state auditor requires every year for a discussion of the fiscal um, management questionnaire that's sent into the state. And our, I mean, today our auditor sees this. Um, it's Laura, actually, Matthew Pat pointed something out to me here that we need to change. I forgot to tell you. Oh, okay. That says, uh, does the each town school district have official copies of these policies and procedures and the website? Link is the old website link instead of the new one. Oh, okay. But that's it. I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you that a few times we've met since Matthew pointed that out to me three weeks ago. Right. I just remembered it now. Okay. Um, but you just need to have a chance to look this over and ask any questions you do, and then Matthew will certify that we had the discussion as the chair. I gave you the very shortest version. Of any questions or discussion? I know everyone's seen this as part of their packets. Very familiar. Yeah. Do we need to authorize Matthew? No. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm certifying that the board has reviewed this questionnaire. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's all you're doing. Okay. That's done. Okay. Uh, And Lori, I sh I'm sorry, I should have asked you a long time ago. I assume you're here for the financial report. Yes. We've kept you for hours. We could have we could, we could, we moved that. Um, should we, do we want to do the financial report and now so that Lori can go? Sure, I'm sure. Let's do that. Right. Okay. So it's on page 33. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And last month we had updated, um, this report in great detail, particularly with special education as the reports were due to the state. Um, Bill has been having me for next week's meeting um, project for every entity how we're doing for the end of the year, because it'll be the one board meeting every board has next week. And for this report, it's very close. So I felt pretty good about that. Um, right now, it, Here's you in the year with about a 2.6% fund balance compared to the entire budget of 8.4 million. Um, it's right, there's like dotted lines in the middle of the page. 
So that's two hundred twenty-three thousand five hundred eight dollars. Um, we will have some reservations, as Bill mentioned in the June meeting, um, for technology as well as for job coaching. We'll be bringing that together, um, and also case management. Um, we won't have any final numbers uh, for that until toward the end of June, because that's one of those things that the state closes their books around June 15th. So we'll get that number then. Um, that's all I had on this particular page. Did I miss anything, Bill? No. And on the next page, um, Bill's report talked about the uh, fiscal software, which we've been saving. And by June, we'll know if the state is going to give us um, access to a system that is fully paid for by the state. Um, but for right now, you'll see we've been saving the $100,000 this year. And we also have $144,000 projected in our technology fund, which is primarily equipment. Can so I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Software, reserve, are all the local boards making, reserving there too? Or no, this is something that we do a lot for. So this is different than that right? plan three hundred thousand dollar software. This is the yeah, three hundred thousand. Because one hundred this year um, and a hundred next year, and we anticipated a hundred the year after. Okay. So by next year that'll be two hundred thousand. Well, I knew, yeah, I knew we were. And it's not on the local budget. Okay. It was at the. That's all I mean. budget. I just wanted to know okay. what. It, yeah. is, that, that's what it was. Yeah, so. This is new fiscal software. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk a lot more in June because some things went through the legislative session that we don't know if they'll make it through the special session right now of our requirements for fiscal software. Mm -hmm. And um, as far as the building capital fund, I did put the notes there that we talked about. Um, this year we put money into carpet replacement and painting. Um, and at this time we have about 78000 to carry into the future budgets. As far as the fiscal agent fee fund balance, which is getting diminished as we speak, it's down to about five thousand by the time we close the books. Five thousand three forty-seven is the current projection. So that was my highlight. Um, again, I'm working rigorously on closing down, and um, we'll, when you schedule the June meeting, we'll have a few more weeks under our belt to do that. Any other what questions? Do we think or? Or more for build, but should we start trying to build up that capital fund budget for this building? Um, I think we're in a pretty good place right now. Um, I think the total cost of this building was, I want to say around seven hundred thousand more. It'll tell me if I'm in the right ballpark. Mm -hmm. right With now. all the landscaping and, and everything, so we ten percent so yeah, so. right now. Okay. And this building's in pretty good shape. We've had to do, as you know, a couple of things that didn't come in with the initial construction. You're old, is it? 2009. Yeah. That's amazing. Did the, the, for the uh, software transfer, like is the, the balance in that fund, is that sufficient to what's in the law that was being So that's why that's what we're going to talk about in June. It, it depends on where it comes back. If we're all mandated to go with the state software, then we'll need some of that because Laura and I don't feel that it's sufficient with the supports that comes to transfer into the new. If we go with the new, if we're able to choose what software we want, we want something different and meet the state requirements. We'd like to have I see. something different than what the state purchased because we don't think it will do what we need to integrate all our systems. Mm -hmm. We feel like we'll be again with another piece of software that's not integrated across multiple mm -hmm. operational pieces that we need. Mm -hmm. So, Do you have a sense of the timeline on that transition? Is it still looking at well, that's, well, 20, 20, yeah, 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 yeah. that's why we need you. We yes. really don't want to get too much into it. Yeah. As okay. as okay. it's, it. We know a lot of kind of what's been talked about, but until things get a little more concrete, mm -hmm. we've got a lot of speculation yeah. right now with yeah, you. That's fine. And we felt that it wasn't something that had to be done tonight. Right. And there are schools that are signing on, so we'll have more information about who's in, who's out, statewide. And the projected balance is this at this point yeah, we're pretty firm. I mean there's not a lot of pretty surprises close. in pretty close, yeah. 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 Okay. Looks pretty good. Nice. All that was good, thanks. Yeah. Um, did you have anything else? Yeah. Okay. Um, 
anything here for anything else, Bill? I haven't seen board orders yet. I don't know. Those were right. emailed out and. Uh, well, I have seen them. Right, 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 I've seen right, right. them as part of the. I didn't see. Yeah. You'll see what they are. In terms of, my, in terms of a copy of the sign. binder, because I just grabbed this. I didn't grab okay. my binder. They might be there. They might be in her stand-up mm -hmm. folder scheme. So two. Yeah. So I added Matthew two point nine to this. I didn't get a chance okay. to talk about it. But um, we have one day for leadership team, which is. Uh, June 27th, which is our scheduled executive committee board meeting. We have a colleague who is hiring, Carol Amos, and we'd all like to take her out to dinner. Wow. And they all includes me. Okay. <laughs> so I was uh, asking, I wanted to ask if there was a way, and we could do it through a doodle poll, we don't have to do it here tonight. But in the last two weeks of June, that we could find possibly another night. Yeah, I'm sure. <clears throat> I'd like to honor her. I'm not as sure as Matthew, but I'm I would sure. like to try. I'm absolutely positive. <laughs> so I will, I will make sure we get a doodle pull out here by the end of the week that has the other nights for the week before and that week to say, well, that's really the only, Lori has come, problems with the 20th. Come right? July. But I want, I want us to meet, we need to meet before then, but it's also, um, I would like to really honor Carol. It's the only night we can get all of us in the same room. To have a fun last time together. Okay. So I will do that through a doodle poll. And I did have a question about the, the board orders, I guess, and I, it doesn't need to be answered tonight. I, I'm I'm really interested in the the Green Mountain behavior consulting. Mm hmm Because um, it's like ten percent of the of the total board orders for the month of April. Um, and I didn't go back to look at previous months, but, and I know we've talked about this before about, you know, hiring versus hiring out. And sort of we would love there. to, we would love to have it be our own position. We can't, we've tried to hire for three years in a row. We can't be, haven't been able to find a candidate. Uh -huh. So we have to contract out. And what I couldn't tell is, is this a typical monthly expense to them? This is, that's the total for, for April. That looks like that they got paid. That's about half their contract. I see. Year so contract. that's like a okay. It's just showing up this month. Yeah, that's about half their yearly. Okay. I mean, they provide BIs as well. So remember, all special education. So if a student that's on an IP needs a right. behavior interventionist on top of their contract. I don't see that. So would we like to just hit print? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Taking just a minute. Sure. Thanks. So we're we're spending roughly double that a year. Yeah, I mean, so some of those are behavior interventionists. But I understand. Also, yeah. it, it also has the behavior. The PBIS. Um, the, I got to just say the initials so I can get it right for you. Please. Behavior consultant um, analyst that does the analysis of when, hey, we've got a student that not quite sure how to approach it, work with a student, can you give us a plan? That person comes in and helps out. Uh -huh. And they have... Uh, we have two part-time individuals that equal over a full-time position to do that work across our elementary schools. Gotcha. Okay. We would, I mean, I want someone to be our I hear you. Boy. Yeah, I just, I it, know it's just going to come not forward. find them. And it is, it's more expensive to contract out. It's yeah. not the fiscal way to do it. It's not the way that it's actually good for our schools and our principals. And we've had this discussion many times around this table as a leadership team. We want our own person to do it. Why is it? Why can't it? Can you find somebody? Do we not offer enough salary, or do we not? What is? What's so it falls under the teacher salary. They can get more outside a private consultant, and there aren't a lot of them around. That's it. That's it. We've been trying to grow our own, and two of them left us. For the private thing. One for private, one for you educate them in that assistant case. principalship. Mm -hmm. So while we are waiting, uh, maybe we can move on some of these other action items. Yeah. So I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes of April 25th. So we'll move. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the minutes of April 25th, say aye. 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 Opposed abstentions. I'm going to do a doodle poll with everybody. Um, 3.2 approving new hires. 
package. 13. 13 to 14? Yes, I think there's two there. So I would move that we approve a hiring of Mary Creedon and Rachel Claire Hernandez. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, approve non-bargaining. Yep. So um, you may want to go in executive session. That's up to you. Um, but I would tell you that my recommendation for non-bargaining contracts has been standard across almost the whole SU. Um, <coughs> that it's 2.6 for administrators. So that would be um, the five central office administrators, and then 3. Point, well, actually. Four. I'm not including myself, so I should say four, and um, and 3.5 for all the other non-bargaining, which we have almost all the positions in central office outside of special education. So most people you've seen this office are non-bargaining positions, and that would be equivalent to what the ESP and the teachers agreement are. And then at some point, it can be tonight or it can be June. And I'd like to talk to you about my current situation. Mm -hmm. But I would ask to do that in executive session, but that's up to you as well. Sure. Okay. Uh, we can well, obviously do that at the end, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion to accept that recommendation. Do you have a second? Sure. Second. Do you want me to get the specifics of that? You just say that, uh, well, it's up to you. How do you want to do it? I said 2 6 for two, a Yeah. Well, was, usually we make the motion as recommended by the superintendent, mm -hmm. and it's reflected that way in the minutes. Okay. So the details aren't necessary. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, before we vote on it, so our discussion. We are, indeed. So um, this item that's on page 15. Yeah. <clears throat> so that I needed to, thank you, Stephen. I needed to come back to that. I want, there's a, I, my only question is, is that separate from what we're voting on now? Well, it may be and it may not be, and I think that's up to you. I would like to say one of the things that we have been, I've been learning, I've been learning quite a bit about our human resources with our new human resource um, person. And one of the things that this board did uh, back in 2000, 2010, 11, instead of giving salary increases, gave benefit increases for retirement. And what that has done is made more one uh, individualized contracts and made it harder to systemize the renewal of contracts. So we could change, we could actually help the employee because they'd have more money in their salary, which would elevate their retirement benefit because they're most, all these people are either in municipal retirement or in teacher's retirement. Um, so they could eat we can increase their salary and the total increase across Washington Central for that to switch the benefit from a retirement contribution to a salary is $519. I will tell you, I miswrote it in my report. I just caught it this afternoon and I said it was for each. It's actually a total of $519. It's not $519 for each employee, it's a total of $519. So not even relevant. It's not that much relevant, but the thing we'd like to do is take everyone and say, we're going to give you that and lose a, a little bit of retirement. We're going to put it into your salary because you, that was a salary increase you had. There's maybe like three or four. Lori's one of them. Jen Miller Arsenault. There's a couple others. Michelle Sepka, people that were here at that point. Um, and as you see, it's six employees. That's for a year? That's the cost per year. <laughs> It's definitely immaterial. So it is immaterial, but I need a look. It, what Lori asked me, she said, I think you should inform the board that you want to do this. Um, we try to talk to each, all the six employees, so they know what's going on ahead of time. And, and they're, they're like, well, if I'm going to get a higher retirement, why am I, yeah. you know, it's just, we're trying to standardize things because one of the things we found is we have a lot of individualized <laughs> contracts. So can I amend my motion to accept this recommendation in, in addition? You may. I'll do that. And would you like to re-second the motion? Yeah. 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 Second. <coughs> Whether re-seconded or a friendly amend, whatever yeah. is required. A friendly amendment, Put I think, here, right? for me. Thank you, Stephen. I had totally... Had so the reality of our vote 
is that I'll make believe these are all six people who are in the 2.6% group. It doesn't matter to me. Those six employees would get 2.6% plus whatever their share of the 500 was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. I just want to make sure I understand. That's appreciate it. Yeah, right. Clarity yeah. is good. Yeah. Is there any further discussion? Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Is that for the amendment or is that for the? That's for the motion. <laughs> That's for the motion. As amended. Okay. As amended. As amended. Yes. Okay. Uh, any questions about the reports to the board, the superintendent's report, or anything you'd like to say, Bill, about what's in that report? I don't take any questions. Uh, I will tell you the insurance came in today and we got more coverage for less money for next year. So. Perfect. That was a cheering like day. Yeah. 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 When Brian walked in and told me that, I said, you don't need me in the meeting. I just, you just gave my report. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly. Yeah. That's the executive yeah. committee is providing guidance to do things like that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Improve the performance for less, or uh, if you want. Extra money, five hundred nineteen dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Two miles <laughs> <laughs> uh, Any questions about the director's report? Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Yeah, you're welcome. I don't know how we. I think reflected some of the sentiments that were in there. Survey report. We have the minutes from the school quality committee, Kari, but is there anything else? That I have questions. Yeah. So, um, I <clears throat> there's a level of dissatisfaction. So this is the round of math. Oh, oh, okay. So, you know, we gave ourselves an assignment to practice delving into data. Mm -hmm. And we chose to start with math because it's a bit of a red flag. That you don't have to be an expert to, to see that it's an area where we're, we're not where we probably want to be. Mm -hmm. So so that's that's why we chose to focus there. And um, you know, we had a good discussion about that. And, and it led us to, to think, well, we should really involve the, the full SU board. But the reason I asked the question um, was the, the word disappointment, or disappointed, I forget what it was. Because mm -hmm. um, we've already had a local board discussion, and, and I would agree, so this is just me, disappointment, but I'm not sure all board members sense that. It's more like, oh yeah, the math isn't as good as the literature. Literacy. Not literacy. Okay. So uh, I just wanted to see if I was Is, reading the minutes. Yeah, I don't, I, I, don't, I don't know that disappointment is actually the right word. Concern is, is the word I would okay. use. That w here's an area where the data is telling us we're falling short of, of what we think our expectations ought to be. And we want to know more. You know, we want more data, we want more. Um, perhaps guidance from the SU board to the administration. We want more planning and, and effort. Because I, at least from what I saw on the things, it seemed like it wasn't where we would want it to be. And it wasn't necessarily trending in the right direction either. Yeah. And there's achievement gaps and, and the rest. So, yeah. I, the only reason I bring it up, and, and this is a, a very delicate topic to broach, but I'll try to do the best I can, that I feel we're all in the habit of saying we have great schools, we have great staff, and I don't disagree with that, but I think we also need to be able to say we have great schools, we have great staff, we have a lot of confidence, but this is an area where we're not satisfied with what our schools and our staff are doing. And we want to see improvement and be able to say that without you know, being judgmental on the whole system, to, to be able to say that and have it received 
properly. So that's why I'm vetting this in front of the group. So hopefully I can make sure I do a good job of saying that whenever I'm gonna talk about it in front of the group. But you know, I, to me that was an honest reality to say, you know, schools aren't doing a good enough job in math proficiency. Yeah. It's a performance issue. Yeah, we have to find it is it's direct. There isn't any way to really pussy put around that. I think that we have to find a way to improve it, because you're right, it's hurting. It's hurting our students. I'll be quiet, Matthew. No, no, I think it's a it's an important point and I and one I uh, agree with. I mean, I think it's the I kind of have I see it coalescing under this second goal that we're discussing around data-driven student learning and the work that the school quality committee is already doing. And so I would see, you know, a probably a needed outcome of that work would be some some kind of um, target or um, you know um, goal that we would ask the administration and the leadership team, you know, to to come back to us with a strategy for to address something. I'm, I'm being a little bit fuzzy in my language too, but to improve um, in these areas. Um, so yeah, that's just to say that I agree with what you're saying, and hopefully there's sort of a process in place, if not explicitly stated yet, to that point to to do that. That's what that question I have. That's Bill. What, where do you guys see this, you know, where do you see that, you know, very objectively, where do you see those failures? What are we going, what can we do? First thing is you can say, we are going to use data to judge yeah. how you perform. We use both quantitative and qualitative. Right. And that is the cult we need, to, that's what Kari and I were talking about. We have to shift this culture together because, um, it, it needs to be shifted. And there's a belief in our communities that data and education is not a good thing. And it's, you know, we can, and it's been, it's come from the reaction to No Child Left Behind. I'm not a believer in No Child Left Behind. I think as assessment data used the wrong way is very damaging. Assessment data used the right way correctly and looking for patterns is very powerful because education there's art and science to education, to the profession of education. And we need to use both. I hope that we're moving in that direction. I, that's where I, I feel. I know, I know the, the you know where I is. <laughs> I know you are. Yeah. Yes. But, that's, but that's part of what we as boards can do. Yeah. We can not say, I hope. Yeah, we, we can, can say that's right. This is what we this expect. We can say it very yeah. clearly. And I would say my impression is this is more systemic across the entire SU. So it would be an example of all boards saying, um, you know, this is an area that we're not satisfied in. You know, and maybe for one school, it wouldn't be the exact. You know, um, for Doty, maybe it's just moving it five points on whatever we measure, and maybe for East Montpelier, it's moving it ten. But you know, it's an agreement that for the administrators, it's a, a common problem. You know, so it's suggesting this might be a topic for professional development, where they get all the elementary school math teachers together, and or no, they don't. Get the teachers together to best practice what is ours. But we're th then we're helping our administrators by saying this is what we want. And when they come back to us and say this is what we need, then we in turn have to say okay. No, I agree completely. Oh, I, yeah. I mean, we're, I think we're we are um, on that path. I think the school quality committee, you know, um, happily has already been on that path. For some time, I think this goal, which I hope will be adopted by the boards around student learning and our commitment to doing that, as well as the commitment that's within that goal, which is to be to come up with something specific, you know, that we're going to commit to by no later than January. That would include possibly budget implications, and you know, um, so I, I hope that that is the. Uh, I hope it's the path I'm on. The only question I can answer is whether it's the path the board's on, because I don't speak for the 
the board as a whole. So we'll, we'll find that out soon. I think it, you know the key to that is is just clarity of direction. You know what? Well, you know we clear we identify what we see that is the problem, or the leadership team does that, and then and the clarity of our path on what we project those solutions to be, and I think people will follow. It's usually when they don't follow it's because yeah. there isn't clarity. I agree with that, and, right. and our role in that is set in defining the outcome. Here's what we're right. looking for. This is what we want, and then allocating the resources there. Right. We don't micromanage. We don't know how to make that work. That's right. Bill and the leadership. Okay, friends. We have board orders on the yeah. table. <laughs> Partially signed. Let's see your would anyone like to move that we approve the board orders? So maybe someone has got the money value. I have the money and value. I can, if somebody moves it, I can oh, give it. So move, you give it. So, so uh, it's 583,084 dollars and 69 cents. Uh, Second. Uh, all in favor? Uh, all right. Say aye. Aye. And the last thing is on our agenda is school start time committee. And all I will say is that uh, really they've been conducting a survey, which is the results are supposed to be at tomorrow's meeting. Right. So which you guys much like that. committee members at about 5 o'clock tonight. Uh, <laughs> so, so. I will say there were, I was one, but there were others. The structure of the survey created some confusion that we shared at our board mm, meeting. Okay. Well, I'll look forward to hearing more about that tomorrow. <laughs> All right. If there's nothing else, then we will adjourn at 8.17. So we're not going into executive Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I apologize for all that. <laughs> yes, we are. I would make a motion and we go into executive session to discuss personnel there. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.